All right. Yep. And we are now live for episode 70. It's hard to believe it's been that long. So we'll have to think of something special to do once we hit that hundred. Right. Yeah. Too bad. I didn't think about it. We could did something for a 69 theme. <laughs> That's Quagmire. <laughs> but I didn't, you know, I don't pay attention to the numbers, so I didn't think about it. Uh, it would have been funny. <laughs> I don't know. What could we have done for the 69 show? <laughs> I don't know. Could have thought of something. <laughs> Endless possibilities. <laughs> it's like, oh, we could have flipped our screens upside down, maybe. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Just being random as always. Yeah, mine's a computer screen, so I don't think I could do that. <laughs> oh, I might be able to fit my camera. I don't know. Because my camera is detachable, so I don't know. But it won't hook to anything, so somebody would have to stand behind there holding the camera. Ah. <laughs> That's all right. Well, we'll just wait till we hit the 100. Yeah. So. <laughs> How'd your week go while we we're waiting here? <laughs> Sorry, nothing too spectacular happened. Just been watching a bunch of his stuff, preparing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched some of his stuff, and um, Day Shift was a pretty wild movie. I yeah, I watched that. that last night. So it's like it was almost like Blade a little bit. Yeah, I didn't even put that when I posted about it on Facebook. Um, when I was describing it, because a lot of people that are on my friends don't watch horror movies. So I was like, it's kind of like Blade, but with better music. Because <laughs> we've got Ice T, Ice Cube, and stuff like that playing. Man, they were chopping up those vampires like shit. I'm like, but like I was telling him, I was like, I've been waiting for this. I've known for a while it was coming out. And I was like, I've been waiting for it. I was like, how could you not want to watch a vampire movie with Jamie Foxx and Snoop Dogg in it? Yeah. And you know, th those two um, vampire hunters that he had teamed up with briefly, those brothers, the mm -hmm. one guy, that was Van from Reba and Shameless. <laughs> the one. Oh. I can't think of his real name offhand. Oh, the um, only Shameless episode I've seen is the one dude that's coming on is in so <laughs> i have no clue what you're talking about but well he was van and reba i don't know if you remember that or not i never watched reba but all right well it looks like uh hello hey, how, how are, are you? you good hello. very good so welcome it's the man it's the myth it's michael bailey smith <laughs> welcome yeah i don't know about that but okay <laughs> <laughs> eh, it was rhyme time there we go <laughs> there you go so, how's your week been? <laughs> good. It's been very good. It's been uh, exciting. Uh, yesterday, I went to the movies with a good friend of mine, and uh, it was one of those movies where we saw top, I saw Top Gun again. For the second oh, nice. was the of, first one or the new one? The new one, I'm sure. Yeah, the new one. Yeah, the oh, first the one. one. It would be tough. Yeah. Uh, but I well, saw some that. matinees might play it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, agreed. And uh, so, we had, had that and some dinner. It was nice and a few drinks. Kind of nice. Nice. I still got to see the second Top Gun. So did it live up to the first one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was pretty good. I've heard good things about it, but I haven't got to see it yet. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, once we were just talking about day shift, and I had a um, crazy day at work today. Some guy came in, um, don't know what he was on, like some sort of drugs, because uh, I was in the break room, and I guess they called for security or something. I couldn't really hear over the page. And... Uh, like a few minutes later, heard some glass outside the uh, break room where the wine is. And uh, oh, looks like Bones is here. And then my mom's here too. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Bones. Um, so apparently this guy came in, started on the GM side, was tearing, just destroying the store, just ripping stuff off the shelves, busted like 40 bottles of wine, just shattered it off the display. I mean, like oh. any anywhere he was, I mean, and we couldn't do anything, you know, we can't t attack them or do anything because, you know, lawsuit, uh, you know, could be thrown against the store. And finally, the cops came, took like three times to taser him. He didn't go down. <laughs> like, so, so obviously something was keeping him up. Yeah. Um, took about five cops to finally get him down. I sort of heard the commotion. Uh, customers had to, were told to leave and uh, 
they ended up taking him out in the ER on a stretcher. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, like he may not have felt it now, but I mean, that's gonna yeah. be there. So that was a fun day. <laughs> and then we had to put back all the groceries. Like there were a few customers that came back in, but then all the carts of groceries we had to put out and return and it was a mess. Clean up the store and <laughs> like everywhere, just a whole round of the store. Just That's crazy. It's like, he was like a demon coming through there. <laughs> That's like crazy. A, Shaq's the wind demon they're going through just destroying stuff. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, but good. That was um, my fun day. <laughs> what do you, where do you work? Uh, Walmart. Okay. <laughs> Walmart. Wow. Walmart in Florida. <laughs> okay. Uh, we always tell our crazy Florida stories. <laughs> yeah. Florida man, right? That's why I call him. I tease him about that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, let's see who else is here. Bones. So um, yeah, I guess we'll start out. Um, when you were growing up, um, was acting ever in your future or that was just something you fell into? Yeah. So uh, uh, it wasn't something I had thought about. Uh, I, Me and my mother, uh, which, you know, bless my parents, they're still alive. They're 84 and uh, 85 and wait, 84 and 83 going 90 miles an hour, you know, got great minds and still drive and do all those things like that. So it was pretty cool. Um, but me and my mom used to always, uh, we would sit around watching old movies. So I love old black and white movies, like big country and just all those types of movies. I love great stories. And those were like a lot of original, you know, original stories. seems like nowadays, a lot of, just a lot of things, just remakes of everything, or even though I was in a pretty good remake, but, uh, <laughs> You know a couple of them actually so but uh yeah so we said so I, I grew up as a fan of movies and just you know storytelling and things like that so uh then i got into sports right so i believe it or not uh it'd be hard to believe but i grew up being picked on and beat up quite a bit you know i had uh, big ears that stuck out pretty well and i had my hair kind of cut short that i grew up in the military and my dad was in the Air Force for 30 years. And and so, uh, you know, I, I grew up with that and uh, always being the outcast a little bit. So I use sports to kind of to gain respect with people. You know, that's kind of what I did. And so I, I really liked football, even though I tried basketball and I was fairly decent at baseball and things like that. But football is what I like the best because, excuse my language, when you go hit the shit out of somebody and – and you could, you know, I uh, didn't get trouble for it. So that's how I kind of started getting my respect a little bit. And But uh, I finished my high school in the Middle East in Iran back in the day in, in the 70s. So I kind of aged myself here uh, when the United States and Iran did get along. When the Shah, the Shah Reza Pahlavi, he was the, in charge of the Iran back then. So we had a good relationship. And so uh, my parents, you know, I'm the oldest of six kids. And so I couldn't. They couldn't afford to send me to college and my goal i finished high school there but i wanted to play always play college football and uh so my dad says you know the best way to, to get to college is join the military and so i i chose instead of going to the air force like he did i chose the army the 82nd airborne division as a paratrooper so i did that and uh with the whole goal of getting out to go play college football and so when i was in the 82nd there was a chaplain in my unit chaplain gimbal great guy I used to play for Kansas state linebacker, big dude, probably the only smoking, cussing and drinking chaplain I ever knew, man. He was a badass dude. And he said, Hey, Corporal Smith, I understand you want to play college football. I said, yes, sir. He goes, all right, let, 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 let me make a few phone calls. Next thing you know, I was on my way to Notre Dame, you know, he had me a shot for Notre Dame, a situation. And then he calls me back into his office, you know, a couple months later, he goes, you know, Corporal Smith, if you go to Notre Dame, you're going to ride the bench a bit. You're going to play, but you're going to probably ride the bench. He goes, where are you from? I said, well, I don't really have a hometown, but I was born in Michigan. He goes, well, let me look at the paper. He says, looks like Eastern Michigan needs some help. Uh, I'll give him a call. So next thing you know, I'm staying in the hallway at Eastern Michigan, ready to go talk to the head coach. And uh, as I'm standing there, I'm ready to prepare to tell him I play tight end and defensive end. That's what I want to do, you know, because that's what I played in high school. And uh, the O-line, the offensive line coach walks by and he goes, hey, you that paratrooper? And I said, yes, sir. And he goes, I need a center. You want to play center? I said, I'll play anything, sir. And that's kind of how it happened. I started out at center and 
And then I was, I got there, I went in the military way and I was 6'4", 160 pounds, very skinny. Um, and I got out weighing 240 uh, and like, you know, all muscle, of course. And then uh, I went from being 240 at center to when I was a senior, I was the offensive tackle and I weighed 290 and uh, ran to 40 and 48 very fast. And I had a bunch of NFL teams after me and I was preseason all American and sporting news, all American, all these things like that. And then, um, uh, I hurt my knee, put it, put it, I put it back together after the season. And I went with a free agent to Dallas Cowboys. I was there for, I signed in April and I got released soon after, um, because of bad, my bad knee and went back and finished my degree and uh, kind of lost for a while. And, uh, but, uh, I ended up finishing my degree and there was some girl, uh, that was getting a degree in like, uh, aerospace engineering. And we, uh, I fell in love and we fell in love. We were going to get married in California. Not really, but I was going to chase her out to California. That's what I did at San Diego. And, and she, that lasted about a month when we got there and I befriended this guy named Steve Henneberry, great friend of mine till to this day. And he was, you probably know him from American Gladiators. Later, he became an American Gladiator, if you remember that TV show. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, he and I were bodybuilders. I was big and, you know, I was like, by the time I was like 300 pounds, about 9% body fat, just a big, huge dude. And uh, uh, he said, hey, I'm going to go up to Los Angeles and read for this movie called Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, part five. And I was, at the time, debugging software at Xerox and in a cubicle every day. I'm like, is this, is this, is this what my life is going to be like? I'm in San Diego, man. I'm in California. So I'm going to end up being in a cubicle for the rest of my life. I said, I don't know. I said, I, I, I give all respect to me else can do that, but I, I don't know if I can do this. And so I asked my boss, I said, Hey, I'm going to take off and go to Los Angeles with my friend and go read for this movie. And she, and she goes, you, you can't get off. I said, well, I'm leaving anyway. You can fire me. And, and that's what I did. I, I, uh, I walked out and next day I was in a car and, we were on, going to Hollywood Boulevard, I mean, uh, on the 101, the famous 101, and I looked up and saw the Hollywood sign. We got off on Sunset and Vine, and I could see um, I could see the Walk of Fame. I could see the Brown Derby, which I don't have there anymore, or like the famous restaurant where all the stars went to. And these are all things, you know, back in the day, you know, I draw back to my mom. You know, she, she was in love with Hollywood and the, the movie stars and, you know, Clark Gable and all those things like that. Right. Uh, so it's like, it was very reminiscent of all that. And so I went into the audition with my buddy and he auditioned and they asked me if I want to audition too. And I said, okay. So I went in there and it was the director was Stephen Hopkins who turned out to be this later on to become a famous director. And he's like, so Michael, have you seen any of those Freddy Krueger movies? And I said, yeah, of course. And he goes, all right, we need this big guy who can laugh and scary and and all that. And he goes, can you just laugh this big laugh for me? So I laughed this big freaking laugh. And he goes, that's fucking awesome. Guess what? You got yourself a job. I'm like, what? I, I, I work at Xerox. Well, you got to take a few days off. And that's how it started. I got my SAG card. I got my first couple lines of dialogue. I got to, I got to meet Robert England. I was in the trailer. So talk about a super nice guy. I mean, if he was like a jerk or, you know, whatever, that would have probably ruined my, my vision or my, uh, perception of Hollywood, but he was so gracious and so nice. And we sat in Australia for a couple hours, just talking and, and bullshitting and talking about Freddie and, and his life. And, and it was great. And so I got to sit, I got to play a bigger version of Freddie Krueger. And the moment I got in front of that camera and they called action, I'm going to do this is what I want to do. Screw all this other stuff. I want to be an actor. That's what I want to do. So I moved up to Los Angeles and uh, grabbed my stuff. Didn't have a place to stay. I slept in my car for a little while, found a, creepy apartment with a creepy dude in it slept in the floor in the back room on the, and there was a all i had was a blanket and everything i owned that was proud that everything i owned i could put in my back seat and that's what i had and uh yeah so i just kind of made my way and uh i hustled man i hustled my ass off every night i was in acting class uh every kind of acting class from cold reading to scene study to improv to theater audition techniques you name it i was trying to get good at it. There's other big guys that started like when I did and they were just all because they were big, they thought that they could be successful that way. And that's great. I'm happy for you. But for me, I, I'm taking a steer. I'm going to make a business. I'm going to, I'm going to make a living out of this. I want to get good at being an actor and, and how you can handle yourself. And so that's what I did. And uh, yeah, so 
I just, uh, I think my next job was, uh, I did, a, I did a movie, um, uh, CIA, CIA codename Alexa with, uh, Lorenzo Lamas, Kathleen Kemon and OJ Simpson. So it was right before he killed his wife. So, <laughs> but, I, the, but the movie was just a fight scene. And, uh, and this is the beauty of Hollywood. So I'm doing a fight scene with Lorenzo Lamas and the director goes, Hey, Michael, say a couple lines of dialogue. So I did. And he goes, yeah, that's pretty good. Turns to the writing, goes writing some stuff. Next thing you know, I had the fourth lead in the film. My name's on the poster. It's freaking, I went to the premiere, like single card billing. Michael Bailey's like, holy crap, this is awesome. On Fred, on Nightmare on Elm Street, they, they, they said Mike Smith. That's my freaking name. I'm like, no, it's Michael Bailey Smith. No, you're just, they just put, they didn't care. Right. You know, like, so it was our first movie, right? You do what you have to do. But so I ended up doing that. And next thing you know, I ended up doing another movie called, I did Renegade with Lorenzo Lamas again. And then I did a famous movie that's well now become a cult classic called The Fantastic Four. The yeah, original yeah. one with Roger Corman. I played Ben Grimm. I did the you know the voice for the thing. You know, it's clobbering time. Yeah. That guy. And so Yeah, just, I got a copy of that at a convention and they had the VHS of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was just kind of how things built for me. Again, I hustled, man. At the beginning, I had a an agent who just took me, said, Listen, I'll take you, I'll represent you, but you gotta work for me. Okay, what do we do? And he says, in the mornings back in the day, you'd have to do these things called submissions, whether the cast director, or, I mean, the agent would fill up, you get these things called sides, or not, called breakdowns for roles. And then if you get a breakdown, oh, I want someone who's bald, you know, good looking like me, just kidding, but just bald, you know, big, oh, muscular. Oh, and so he'll submit all the, submit all of the, uh, the actors that fit that role and put it in a package, in a middle, big vanilla envelope, and then you have to go and get delivered to the casting director. And the cast would get stacks of this every day, right? Huge, huge stacks of this. And he'd go through it and pick out which photos they want to come in and read. Well, someone's got to deliver that. You could do a delivery service, but save some money, get some desperate actors like me to hop in their car every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning and run around Hollywood and North Hollywood and everywhere else and delivering all these packages. I did that for a long time, man, just to, just to pay my way. I did I did crazy stuff just to earn my – I went on dating game shows to get – Back in the night, early '90s, there was a ton of dating game shows, um, like younger men with older women, or this, that. I was on everything possible just to get in front of the camera, so I had to improv to learn how to do this and kind of think on my own. And then I just did you have? Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Was, you mentioned game shows. I was like, did you happen to go on the one that um, that serial killer was on? Oh, I can't no, think of his name. name. Oh, that, that, was or that was called the dating game. I think it was called. I, no, I didn't know that. I didn't, no, I didn't do that one. Uh, that was before me. So I did other ones. That were weird. Yeah, I couldn't remember the year, but it was like the instant that you said that that's the only thing. That's right. Yeah. That killer that was <laughs> yeah. Richard Ramirez. Yeah, was, that was the, it. The Hillside yeah. Strangler or something like that. That guy was called or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of how it earned my way. And then I just kept building a resume and doing more stuff. I did. A lot of student films. I did everything possible, and that's kind of how it happened. And now it turned into a thirty-year career. You know, I'm still going. So uh, there is a couple of comments. Uh, Bones was saying Monster Man was awesome. That we need a sequel. <laughs> and, I agree. Uh, and I, then, uh, Michael Michael Davis was the director for that. Uh, great guy. That is probably one of the, the only time ever after I auditioned, the director come up to me and hugged me. After the audition, he goes, "You're perfect. I I don't need to. See, I have to see other people, but I don't want to see anybody else. You're you're the guy." Wow. And so I played fuckface. You know, I played uh, Monster Man. So it was great. And that's uh, you know, that's one thing that I'm I'm I think I'm pretty. I don't you know. I don't brag about myself too much, but one thing I'm pretty good at is uh, I think I'm a knack out for it. Is I can take a role and I can make that I played like on Charmed. I did four different characters on Charmed, right? No one knew I played this, you know, it's the same guy playing four different characters. And the reason why I, you know, I always start when I build a character, I start from, you know, his, his physical movements, you know, like how does he walk? You know, how does he talk? You know, how does he hold himself? All those things like that. And that kind of, to me, informs my character, like the hills have eyes or even monster man was like that kind of limp. And he had to, because the backstory on him is that he was chasing people down and he, and he drives a monster truck. Well, he went through the window and that's why his face is all mangled. Right. And they called him fuck face because he gets all, He's sewed up with chicken wire. And so he's probably going to have something wrong with his throat, right? So he can't breathe very well. And he's probably, sp probably speak the same way and walk kind of jacked up. And that was what I wanted to do. And uh, it worked out perfect. So 
Yeah. And then we, we got, got some uh, people love, loving uh, uh, Super Freddy in the chat. Yeah, uh, Ka Kal El Daily. He said uh, he quoted there faster than the bastard maniac, more powerful than a local <laughs> madman. It's Super yeah. Freddy. And yeah. then he said, uh, shout out to you. Super Freddy was big for him when he was a kid. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it, trust me, having that be your first role that you ever played in, I mean, uh, you can't get any better than that, right? You know, you know. But my other role that I've always wanted to do is play a James Bond villain. I want to play a, be a James Bond villain. Ooh, that would be That's awesome. Really cool. But, I mean, I, but, you know, it's not too shabby to start out playing Freddy Krueger, right? At least a bigger version of it. Oh, him. yeah. And so, mm -hmm. a lot of dialogue and some squibs popping off you and yeah, it was, it was really cool. So really cool. And then we got to uh, have Cheetah Bull view. Uh, he loved Corman's fantastic four. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's funny. That's a, you know, that's the kind of film, you know, back in the, when those, when that came out before that, there was a Punisher, there was Captain America, all these really low budget, you know, films that yeah. came out and they were okay. But ours, ours was, you know, of course, low budget, but, um, as actors, I mean, we had a great cast, Rebecca Staub and Joseph Culp and Alex Hyde White and, and, and Jay Underwood. And, and, and the, and the person who was in the thing suit is Carl Cefalio, Cefalio actually is his name. He, he is like the who's who when it comes to stunt guys, he is like Hollywood royalty and have him. And I, so I did the voice for the thing because they had to start the thing suit before they hired the, the actors. So they had to find the they had to do a, get a stunt guy that could be in the suit and do all that. So I, you know, I didn't I wasn't cast till uh, in December, so uh, mid December before we and we started filming till like December twenty eighth. So pretty crazy, yeah. Good, it was a blessing. Oh, for sure. Good. Dolls of Horror would like to know where they could find the game shows that you were on. Y yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but um, I do have VHS of so. You know how it is at the end of uh, some of these game shows. Hey, you want to contact those swinging singles? Here's their number, right? And they give this, they give like these numbers one eight eight. If you want Michaels, one eight eight five four six, and Joe, it's one eight five four nine. You know, whatever. And so they would send me these VHS tips of all these women from all over the world. Hi, Michael. I think you're really hot, and and uh, this is my number. Please give me a call. I mean, you know, it's like the dating app, and now it's <laughs> before that even started. And now it's Tinder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy. You know, it's funny. One of those dating game shows, um, it was it was older older women and younger men. Uh, it was the scenario, and so the woman was a casting director who I just read for like a couple weeks beforehand, and she's I'm on there and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her. I end up winning, winning the damn thing, and she's like, I'm in my 30s and she's like 50 or 60. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but, um, and we, there was like, so I ended up winning. She ended up picking me or whatever it was. I forgot. And at the end of the show, she's going, we're not going to go out. Right. I said, no, unless, unless you want to, so I'm good. And I said, all right, good. I'm too. So. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't throw in like a free dinner as a prize or something. <laughs> no, yeah. Free, free trip to Wendy's. No, there was no <laughs> free trip to Wendy's. That's great. <laughs> there, was, there was one dating game show. I had to sing. I sing, uh, I sang, uh, my girl, uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's called my girl, my dude, whatever that whole situation. Did you know? Uh, I did, I did a sing on one TV show. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw that. It was going to be one of my questions, actually. No, that was on my <laughs> Have name you done Earl. any other singing besides that? Was my name's Earl? Yeah, there you. I see, Miss Boomstick. I love you. You're awesome. You know that. <laughs> yes. So that was pretty crazy. That's that's funny how that whole. It was great working on that show. That was it was great. Um, Fun cast and just my character's fun. I just, it's just great doing stuff like that. Like the Hills of Eyes playing Pluto and running around and scaring the shit out of people. It's funny on that show, um, there's a great story here. Um, so always on a set, there's always someone that's like, there's always a PA or someone that's always gossiping, right? So there's always a gossip process. It's like anywhere in work, right? You're at work, there's always someone who likes to gossip. So this is one guy. So, so, some of the actors, like Aaron Stanford, who was the guy who played Doug on Hills of Ice, he didn't want to see any of the mutants. He, he wanted to be, he wanted to see them the first time on the set while he's working to get that real shock. And so I was like, all right, yeah, foo foo actor, you know, whatever. I'm thinking in my head, you know, dude, I used to play football. I was in a paratrooper and second airport division. I'm a guy, I put my head through a wall and not think about it. And, and so, 
I'm like, all right, watch this. So I found the guy who gossips on the set. And I said, uh, we had this big fight scene coming up, the one that's inside the house. And it's pretty intense, right? And crazy. And I, t- and I told him, I, and I told his PA, I said, hey, I know, I know, uh, you know, Aaron doesn't want to see me before the, the fight scene. I'm a little uh, insulted by that. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, I think I'm gonna really try to hurt this guy. I think I have that axe. I think I'm gonna. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just, I'm just gonna. That dude better watch out. You better be ducking, man, because I'm gonna come. I'm be coming for him. And yeah, you know, of course, that's all a ruse, right? So, so on the day he walks up, and he goes, "Hey, uh, Michael, you, uh, you know, we're just acting, right?" I go, "Fuck that! You better start ducking." <laughs> It was so cool. So, so you know, then after we start filming, you know, wherever, and then I'm, um, you know, I walk up and say, "Hey, man, you know, I'm just kidding, right?" He goes, "I thought you were," you know. So it's pretty, cool. it pretty funny. So yeah. <laughs> that's great messing with them. It sounds like something yeah. I would have done. Obviously, I wouldn't be scary to somebody, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty so cool. um, for the hills have eyes, um, have you seen the original? And how long did it take for the makeup for that one? Yeah, so part of the deal was when I when I got the role um, was Alex Aja, the director, said, "Do not watch if you haven't seen the original. Do not watch it." And I had I hadn't seen it, so uh, and the reason why he didn't, he wanted us to come with our own thing and not be influenced or you know from past work, and so I didn't, and I just came in with me and reading the script and getting what the character would be like and. It's just it's just a different film, right? Yeah, it's kind of basically based on that, but it's a different feel, different intensity about the film and everything. And so, um, yeah, so uh, so that's so I didn't see it. And makeup wise, took probably three three hours, three and a half, something like that, every day. Um, I normally when you're in prosthetics, you're the first one there and the last one to leave. That's how it works. And you know, and and sometimes you're there all day for one shot. It depends, you know. Charmed, when I was on Charmed for two years, it was kind of like the same thing. Last one there. I mean, first one there and last one to leave. There was one time in Charm, one one evening, we shot really late and it was a full body from the waist up. And that took about four hours to do, quite some time. And they were shooting late and they were going to get to me. They're behind. They go, hey, Michael, uh, we're not going to get to you right now, um, but we need you early in the morning. And we need to make turnaround, which you have to give actors 12 hours because we're not going to make that. So we'll give you the penalty, whatever it is. So they get you extra money. But can you go home with that on? I'm like, you want me to go home with this belt is sore. And, <laughs> Honey, I'm home. <laughs> yeah. So I said, OK. So I did. So I had, you know, back in the day, you had a flip phone. And so I'm flip, flip phone to my wife saying, uh, hey, I'm coming home. She goes, OK. And I said, it's uh a little change here, and I go, "What?" She goes, "I'm coming home with Belasor." You mean in, pro- in, in full on makeup effects? He goes, "Yes." I said, "Yes." He goes, "You know, you got my little son at the time was like maybe five, oh, you gosh. know, and it's our first son, right?" So uh, I came home. Uh, it's funny on the way home, I stop at the intersection, and there's these like these dudes in the in the car. They're like, <laughs> "It's not even Halloween," yet. and he goes, "Dude, it's not. What do you?" Oh, what's going on, dude? That's just, that's some serious stuff. What are you into, dude? It's not even Halloween yet. You know, like all this stuff like that. So it's kind of crazy. They're all laughing and things like that. And I'm like pulling up, trying to hide. You can't hide You're looking like that, right? Some freaking big ass red demon. And so I uh, went to the house and uh, opened up the door. And my son's name's Bailey. And it's after my grandfather. And I go, Bailey. And, you know, and they're that age, they're mama's boys, right? So they don't want to to do with that. And, after he got used to me, I was the biggest toy I sat on his, he sat on my lap. He was playing with my ears and just poking at me. It was the greatest thing. So, but also it turned the bed sheets red too. So that didn't turn out to him. My wife's oh, kind yeah. of going to have about that. But, <laughs> at least yeah. you didn't have to walk home like that. You was at least able to be in a car <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. have to take a bus or something like it was, that. It was, it was, it was, it was nighttime, but the intersections are quite inter- interesting. So yeah. And then driving home the next morning, I mean, driving there the next morning. So. Yeah. yeah. Pretty crazy. Imagine having to ride a bus or a train like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, but you know what? Nowadays, you got people in New York, whatever. There's some dudes that are just dressed up like that all the time. So, yeah. Yeah. It's I could yeah. see that. I've never been there, but I've seen stories. <laughs> yeah. 
Very crazy. It's funny. I was in uh, I was in Germany a few years ago uh, before the pandemic. Uh, I was with some uh, colleagues and we were there and I like wearing this big, like, it's not big, but it's a black bomber jacket, right? Okay. Black bomber jacket, my bald whiteness in Germany. What do you think that looks like? <laughs> so right. Neo-Nazi, right? So I'm sitting yeah. on the train and I'm sitting there and I'm like, why is no one sitting next to me? And my colleagues go, dude, you look like a freaking Nazi dude. I'm like, what? And I had boots on the whole situation. I'm like, I look like straight up like a guy. I'm like, and so I go, oh, you can't wear that jacket here. I'm like, okay, think about it. So anyway, <laughs> Oktoberfest, which is that's the stories area we'll talk, we talk about later some other time. But anyway. What was it like in uh, the producers? Like, can I take your hat, your coat, your swastika? <laughs> yeah, really. Hey, I have to tell you, you know, there's been uh, quite a few, like uh, I did a movie called, uh, first one that I played of that type of character was in the movie called Best of the Best Three. Uh, and and so I played um, white supremacist dude. And there we shot in Bedford, Indiana. And then we also shot in uh, Jackson, Ohio. So Bedford is in the southern part of Indiana. Uh, and that's supposedly where the, drang, the, the Grand Dragon from the Ku Klux Klan was born there. And uh, like raised there and whatever. So there's a lot of that influence there. And I remember uh, we had filmed, we shot this one scene around this rock quarry and an uh, actor by the name of Mark Ralston, phenomenal actor and Shawshank Redemption, uh, Aliens, great actor, good friend of mine. He's, he's, uh, I'm his right hand man. And uh, R. Lee Ermey's in it, who's great too. And Mark Ralston's there and we, we're in this rock quarry at the bottom. We have all these extras on the top of locally there on the rim of the rock quarry. And so we end up killing this, this black man and a preacher. And after we kill him, uh, Mark also says, what say you? We go white power. What say you white power? So also, I guess I'm like, wow, this is kind of crazy. Cause it echoed, you know, in the, in the rock quarry. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I have like white supremacist stuff, tattoos all over me and things like that. And I'm wearing like the tan shirt with the suspenders, you know, the hopes, you know, typical craziness. And we're walking. Okay, okay, we're uh, we're breaking for lunch. So walking to lunch, and there's some of these extra dudes walk up and they go, "Hey, man, with you." I go, "With me? What do you mean? Yeah, we're walking next to each other." No, man, I'm I'm with you, man. White power. I'm like, "Well, get the fuck." Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm an actor. And so uh, the same thing happened when I was in doing a movie called Undisputed with Ving Rams and Wesley Snipes. We shot this in Las Vegas. Well, we shot the, we shot, we stayed in Las Vegas. We shot outside um, in a prison called High Desert Prison. Straight up hardcore, high, you know, high security prison. And of course, I play the white, the Aryan Brotherhood gang leader for this. And so they had a big swastika that you put on your back of your head. Now, how am I going to hide that? You know, right. I had ABs on both my hands. I was like tattoos up here on my neck and all the situation. And, and so they put us up at the Caesar's palace, dude, I'm in the Caesar's palace and I'm walking around with, sw I can't do this. So I wore like a beanie the whole time. I wore like collared shirts up to here and long sleeves and it was January, February. So that was okay. I mean, I was fine, but I didn't want to work out at the, the gym at Caesar's Palace. I wanted to go to a regular gym, you know, keep in good shape. And so I went to this one gym. It was about a mile, a mile and a half away. I'd walk there. Well, that's where like Siegfried and Roy were there. They'd work out this for that one of the guys got eaten by that tiger. Right. But, yeah, but it's where they worked out. A bunch of, a lot of entertainers from Vegas worked out there. So I'm in there working out, da -da -da, doing thing, and I got my beanie on, and I'm I'm getting a little sweaty. So I take my beanie off and wipe my brow. I'm like, oh shit, I put it back on. <laughs> and then I walk then. I get done in about an hour and I walk out and two Vegas PD cops pull up this way. They hook me up, up against the hood. And the cops got his club and jet crushing my kidneys going, what school do you go to? I'm like, what? He goes, what school do you go to? Mother and I said, I went to, I went to Eastern Michigan. No asshole. What prison? So I didn't know prison meant school. You know, school I wouldn't know that school. either. I've never heard that term. Yeah, either. So anyway. So anyway, yeah. So um, that's that's kind of because you go to prison. I guess you learn, right? So you know yeah. the, the ways. So uh, he unhooked me, and then he turned me around, got in my face, and said, "Because oh, 
as I'm being hooked up back here, I said, officer, I'm doing this movie with Bing Rams, Wesley Snipes. And, you know, da, da, da. I said, these tattoos are fake. Here, he scraped off one of the A's. See, these tattoos stay on for weeks, right? They put them on there so they can last for, for a long time. And they just touch them up, you know, every day. And so he scraped off one of the A's on my hand. And uh, he turned around and threatened me. And then so the next day, the makeup effects are so like, what happened to your hand? So I told her the story. So we forgot about it. So later on in the day, I'm ready to do the scene. And Walter Hill's the director. You know, he's done like 48 Hours and all these famous films with Betty Murphy and stuff. And uh, he walks up to me and he goes, hey, Michael. Uh, so I hear you ran a little bit of trouble downtown. And I went, yeah. I said, uh, I just got arrested. And he goes, you know what? That's good casting. <laughs> and, and, so, and so that's what happened. And uh, I said, yeah, I almost got arrested. So pretty crazy story. I, I, I can't tell how many times, oh, doing, doing that film and then coming back to L.A., I can't tell me how many times that I've seen dudes, hey, yo, you're that dude, man. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm like, no, no, I'm an actor, man. I, I'm not the real dude. I'm not, I'm not the real guy. So I've had to explain it. Every time I watch, or sometimes I play a police officer, and I'm walking, you know, I'm doing a scene and I kind of stroll a little bit away from the set. Next thing I have some person walk up to me asking me, hey, can you help me? You know, you know, I'm in trouble. I'm like, no, you need to go see the real police officer over here. You know, so. <laughs> I may look like one. I just play one. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> um, so for Best of the Best and some other martial art movies, um, have you taken any martial arts classes or just worked with the stunt trainers? Uh, how did that work for you? Yeah, so so best of the best for me was not anything to do with martial arts. So uh, it was just me being, you know, big, big nutball. Um, but when I did a movie called In Hell with Van Damme, oh, Van Damme. Van Damme. So I shot yeah. that in Bulgaria. So that was a film I had to get ready for. And so I did, I did, uh, I already trained with a guy by the name of Philip Tan before that. Great, great martial artist, great stunt coordinator. His son's now a huge actor. Um, he's done a lot of the uh, Mortal Kombat and a bunch of the new ones and things like that, um, movies. Um, but Philip Tan's a great, great guy, great human being, great family man. And he is uh, uh, a great friend of mine. Uh, I haven't talked for a long time, but, you know, we were, you know, we always see each other and I always train with him. He taught me how everything from, you know, regular, just boxing to things from uh, kickboxing to do Jeet Kune Do, everything possible, you know. So I so I learned how to do. Like I did, uh, I did a TV show called Family Matters where I got to fight Urkel. So Urkel beats, beats me up, right? So it's my claim to fame. So Urkel, uh, and so I used some of that there, right? Just learning how to fight, make sure make you look make it looks good. So and then but getting forever this film, um, I I studied with the Machados. Um, and and uh on off ocean boulevard there there's a jujitsu place there because there's gonna be a lot of ground fighting and things like that but we wanted to look make it look raw and not so fancy and so um yeah so that's that's when i really studied a lot quite a bit and plus i studied anyway just to make sure that when i fought on screen it looked like the real thing you know so that's what i wanted to make it look like i knew it knew what i was doing so and some of it looks like uh, wrestling moves too. Did you have to study wrestling, or is that part of the? Yeah, just part of the choreography. Yeah, you know David Leach, who's big time director. Now, I just he's did the director. Um, he's did the movie. Uh, what's it called? Bullet Train. Director did all a lot of the uh, uh, John Wick films. Producer and director those, and he did. I think he did the second uh, Deadpool. Uh, so David Leach uh, is. Uh, he was a stunt coordinator for that film. So I got to learn a lot from him. So it could, could do. Yeah. Nice. So um, how much of the stunts did you did? Did you did? Did you do? <laughs> did you did, did good? Uh, and a stunt person, how much was you and how much was the stunt person? In what, what films? So. In, what, in hell or yeah. When yes. you're fighting. It depends. So my, I have a stunt double. Uh, his name is uh, Tim Sitars. Uh, you see him in a billion things. Uh, he's a lot like Carl Chapalio, where he's just a Hollywood legend when it comes to things like that. Uh, so he he is normally my stunt double. Whenever I have to do like a high fall, or if I'm hitting the hitting the cement, or I get hung upside down, or or something that's like, that's more than what the production crew is comfortable with me doing, mm -hmm. then I I won't get him on the show. But there are times like. The Van Damme film, that's all me. Uh, there's a lot of films that just all me, um, where they either 
they just said, hey, you need to do this. And so I just did it. Now, uh, when I did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, um, they hired a stunt guy for me to do the fight scenes. And I said, I like doing the fight scenes. Now, I don't want to take any work from anybody, but I like, I said, you, I think you would rather have me doing it than a stunt guy. And, uh, and, and uh, you were Toth, right? That yeah, 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 I'm a hardcore yeah, you're Buffy fan. Doing your homework. I love it. So I'm yeah. a Buffy fan. We, yeah, from the beginning. So yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So that, that, uh, so I, 90% is, is me, but whenever I can get, uh, Tim on, you know, to double me, I, I love it. So I love getting more people. I get love getting people work. So it's always fun. Nice. On the thought of stunts, what got you interested in doing stunts? Well, I'm, I'm an actor, right? So that's that's what I am first. Yeah. And and then only um, only did stunts, you know, when it, I had to, you know, or I was required to do something like that. Where plus I'm physical, right? Being in the 82nd, you know, as a paratrooper to playing football, all those things like that. I'm a physical guy. And so, you know, and I think it helps inform the character a little more if you could actually do it. So instead of just having some guy step in there to do something and you step back in when it's all done. True. Yeah, my things. grandpa was a paratrooper back in the day. He was a uh, 187th. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. Like it. Good. Oh, so it's like thunder around. I'm like, I hope the Wi Fi doesn't go out. And it's <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. Well, you're in Florida. That's like every day. So pretty much. Yeah, it's nothing new for me. So, but. Uh, let's see. And the, all the, you've played a lot of monsters. What would you say what took the longest to create either makeup wise or building the character for you? Hmm. Uh, anything with full on from like charmed, you know, I don't know if you consider him a monster, but he's, you know, uh, that one, that character took quite some time just because of the wake of the waist up, a lot of intricate designs. He had to tie into that after, you know, the first time they did like charmed, it was, it took quite a bit of time to paint, paint in the red, all the red detail. After a while, they got a stencil and sprayed most of it in and things like that. So they got pretty much like a machine. That's how it is. Like I did Star Trek uh, Voyager, did an episode of that. Uh, I think I did the uh, the season premiere of it for one of the one seasons for Voyager. And uh, there's there's so, such the makeup effects people are so es- experts at that. They have a whole process and they're like a big machine just doing that. So uh, it depends. First time is always the longest, and then as you keep doing it, it gets quicker and quicker. So uh, even even taking the stuff off, you no, know, sometimes it takes up to an hour, hour and a half to get that off. Off sometimes. So when you've had it on for twelve hours, it's time to you know you can't wait. Now I imagine face, yeah. So well, um, the speak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, say also um, since we're sort of uncharmed in Balthaz- Balthazar, how was it um, the change in the character? Like you know he's evil at first and he's falling in love with phoebe how is it um transferring to the love scenes it was how how did that work out for you yeah so as you know julie julian mcmahon played cole right he was yes. the human form and of course i played the demon form and built um there wasn't a lot of love i think with, there was a couple of scenes with no, a couple that were kind of yeah I, you know, it's like sticking your hand in a box with a badger in there. Mm, I don't that. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So there wasn't a lot, I don't think there was a lot of, uh, I mean, there was, I was more like a, a Terminator, you know, to a certain extent. So yeah, yeah it was fun. I was on a mission. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, a little bit back to Star Trek. Were yeah. you a fan of Star Trek uh, before you got cast into Voyager? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think, Getting, getting it back in the day, they had you know they had the whole series right, all the different uh, different uh, shows of that. And I was on the Voyager one, Voyager one, but I've always it's every actor I think wanted to get on Star Trek, and I read for it maybe two or three times before I actually got to get on that. So I think that's the one. No, that was X Files. X Files I read for two or three times before I got that. And sometimes it takes like that. For Star Trek, I read for it once and I ended up getting it, but. To walking in, that's a that's a tough audition. You walk into the room and there is a table full of probably twenty people in front of you staring at you, and no one's saying anything. They say, "Welcome, Michael," and you're like, "Hey, my name's Michael Bailey Smith." And it's funny too when I when you audition. This is a kind of a tip for most people. Uh, when I first started, I'm a pretty easygoing guy, right? So I might sound a little crazy, and you know, I could drop the voice and like I can really get you know. 
I, you know, I, I, I could scare the shit out of you. But I would walk in thinking, well, they want to see the nice guy, you know, easy to work with. Hey, how you doing? I'm Michael Billy Smith. I, I would never get the role like that. So I'd have to come in with character, like walk in. Hey, my name's Michael Billy Smith. You know, just freaking a badass dude as much as possible. I dress the role. I dress as close as I can to that character to give everybody the idea that I, I'm that guy, you know, and that's what I do. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so I forgot what your question was. I went on a tangent here. So sorry. About I was just asking stuff. about being a fan of the Star Trek before. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, you know, for like Star Trek, I, I, I walked in pretty much like the character as much as possible. And, and so, um, yeah, I, I've always been, I love the old ones with, uh, you know, with Kirk and all those guys back in the day, you know, the old ones. So um, I used to watch those. Yeah. So it's just, you know, sometimes it's pretty cool and a privilege to be able to get to work on TV shows that you've been, you know, you're just watching like the week before. Like I did a sitcom called The Drew Carey Show. I got to work with Drew Carey. I mean, what a badass guy back when, before he did, you know, whatever he's doing, Price is Right or Price whatever. Is right, yeah. yeah. So before that, he was just, you know, he was doing sitcoms and, you know, stand up and things like that. And, and it was really cool. And I got to work with him, episode with him and Jamie Lee Curtis. So it was kind of nice. Nice. Yeah. How so, was it working with Jamie Lee Curtis? A bit? Oh, it's very nice. Right. We were, so on sitcoms, right, you have this, it's like a live show, right? You have the stage and we're off stage ready to come on and she goes on first. And we're sitting next to because and we're sitting there and I'm like all nervous, you know, you know, like, holy shit, I'm going to, you know, and she's over there. Hey, how you doing? Trying to start a start, start conversation. I'm trying to focus. That's <laughs> what so I'm saying in my head, you know, as she's trying to talk to me. So nice, nice lady. Nice lady for sure. Yeah. So besides her, uh, was there anyone you were ever starstruck by besides her? You know, um, there's people, there's all the people I've ever asked an autograph for. One of those is, is, is uh, Jim, uh, What's his name? I just mentioned his name. Uh, Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Yeah. So he's he's uh, he's one of the guys I got an autograph for. Uh, there's there's a few people that I've been just uh, big big fans of, like Mark Ralston. I'm a big fan of his. Just I love his professionalism and just freaking badass actor. Um, where you go, holy shit! You know he's really good. When you see when you're off stage, you're off camera, and you're watching him, you're like, damn that guy. I hope I can, I hope I can hang. Hope I, you know, I hope I don't suck. You know, kind of situation. I did a movie called Town and Country. Uh, this was, had Warren Beatty, Goldie Hawn, Diane Keaton. Uh, it's one of those big ensemble films like they used to do back in the day. It had uh, uh, one of the comedians that's passed away now. I forgot the name, um, but a bunch of people, and it had Charlton Heston in it, and. I, you know, Charlton Heston, this is the guy that was in town and country. You know, this is the guy that, you know, that played freaking Ben Hur. He played Moses. This is the guy. He's the man. Right. Um, and he's a legend. And me and my mom grew up with him. And to be sitting on a set with him and sitting at my chair is right next to him. And I'm like, my, my didn't even have a name on it. His had Charlton Heston on it, you know. Um, ever called him Chuck. I'm like, you're not, I'm not calling you Chuck. I'm sorry. I'm calling you Mr. <laughs> um, but there's a great story about this. So, um, a lot of all these big shows, it's, I think it's unfortunate sometimes, but you get like, um, some actors that don't want to talk to anybody, especially background people. They don't want to talk to them. I don't know why, but they don't, I talk to everybody and I love being on a set. I love being on a set. I love watching movies being made. I'll enter, enter, I will ex you know, talk to anyone. I love it. Uh, I just love people in general. And, uh, but like on the set, Warren Beatty's there. And I guess some, there's some guy that asked about his kids. That dude was off the set in two seconds, gone like that in two seconds. So, so Charlton Heston's there and this guy walks up and he goes, Hey, uh, you know, Mr. Smith, uh, I know you're an actor. I know I'm not supposed to talk to you, but my dad is a huge fan of Charlton Heston and he's dying uh, of cancer. And do you think that you could talk to him? And maybe, maybe he could uh, speak to my dad. I think it'd be really great for him to hear Charlton Heston's voice and speak to him. And I said, first, I, you know, that, that's a really good story if you really like bullshitting me here, but you know, I, I felt he was sincere. So, I walked up to Mr. Heston. I said, Hey, uh, I said, 
I said, Ma, I said, Mr. Heston. He goes, oh, call me Chuck. I'm like, oh, all right, Mr. Heston. <laughs> I'm going to say Chuck. And uh, I said, I said, see this gentleman over here. He, he's an ex, he's a background guy, but he'd love to talk to you. You know, I guess his dad's a huge fan. Oh, bring him over. Wow. So we brought him over and, and he told the story about his dad. Now he's dying of cancer. He goes, get him on the phone. So he got him on the phone and he said, and the guy goes, hey, hey, dad. Yeah. He goes, I'm on the set in the Charlton Heston Center. He goes, no, he's right here. Hold on for a second. And he handed the phone to him. And the guy goes, uh, hi, this is, uh, this is Chuck Heston. And he goes, uh, no, it's it's really him. And then you can hear the guy crying on the other end of the phone. And that's, you know, that just like really, wow, it was so cool. Just a great guy. Uh, just a great, and it was great to get to see him work um, and all that. So it was really cool. Yeah, that to me are special moments, you know, that I, I think uh, once it comes to people. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of guys that were pieces of shit, you know, like, and gals. I think yeah. I can't mention a few of these, but there was like one one particular woman who on one TV show that she headed up who was miserable. And I'm like, and a couple of those actually that I've done uh, and guys too, but some are just so, so mad. Why do you even do this if you're this unhappy? Right. You, you must be freaking spoiled. So you know how lucky you are. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I always appreciate the ones who appreciate the fans and are willing yeah, to talk and do stuff. And I mean, just we're all people. I mean, it's a career, but treat each other with respect, regardless of who you are. Yeah. It, it, I mean, and without the fans, then you don't have a business. <laughs> right. True. So our job as actors is to provide that excuse, you know, for the guy, for the people who are out there actually making the world work. Right. And and that's what they're doing. And so we're helping you help make that happen by providing that entertainment for you. I think it's super important. So we owe you more than you owe us. That's for sure. So, well, you guys put your bodies in a little bit more stuff than what we do. But. That's true too. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Hey, we get paid, right? So it's, I mean, yeah. I've seen actors who flipped out when in prosthetics. I'm not getting it. You know, whatever. Like, dude, you signed up for this. Get the freaking prosthetics. Let's go. Quit freaking holding shit up. So anyway, yeah. And Peggy says you are a great storyteller. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I also, uh, I do a tremendous amount of writing too. So I've written, I just had uh, written a ton of screenplays. And I just had one that's got optioned. So it's going to go into production here in uh, next year, hopefully nice. early. Year. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. We'll yeah. definitely keep an eye out on that. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, besides the screenplays, um, do you write anything else or what uh, genres do you like to write? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I like, I like action that's tied to a lot of emotion and storytelling. Like my goal is to write things. I, and you, you probably know this. You, how many movies have you seen or you watched that you watched it and you walked away and you, oh, okay, that's good. You don't think about it again. No, that's quite a few. <laughs> then you watch the movie that you watch and you go, holy shit, that's good. And you're still thinking about when you go home yeah. and the next day, and maybe even the next week, you're still thinking, damn, that's a really good movie. <laughs> That's the kind of movies I'm going to write. See, as an actor, um, I can be the greatest actor in the world. And I walk into that room and I'm reading for a casting director or someone like this. And uh, I look like somebody's brother or ex-husband or or maybe I don't have the right look. Great actor. I don't have the right look. They want someone with hair, you know, or better looking or taller or more muscular. As a writer, you're judged on one thing, what you put on the page and that story you tell. And that, I think... It goes from being subjective, you know, to being a, to being something that's actually on the page, and that's what I like. Is this not my? It's my opinion. It's like, damn, this is so good. And I want to write. I want to write those kind of films that make you want to think. You know, ask sometimes a hard question like, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, that's I try to answer. I wrote wrote, wrote a screenplay called Black Moth about that, and. Uh, about that big question. My father asks that question all the time. You know, why, you know, if God's so powerful and gracious and knowing, and why does he let this happen? You know, and, it, and people, a lot of people ask that question. That's why they don't want to, they don't believe in God or whatever it is. You know, they, they, that's one of the big obstacles is, you know, of that reason. So there's, yeah, quite- I feel you there. I've been through some, a lot of fucked up shit. So I feel you Everybody there. has. Right. Yeah, and so you, you, you start, you question, but that's part of being a human. You know, that's what being a, a, being a human, you know, being who you are. 
And so like, uh, I, I, that's the kind of stuff I like to write. And I like to, I like to have, I write stories that go from point A to point B in a very fast time. So you're in, you're, you're going for a ride and you're saying, holy shit. I want the holy shit factor. So when you walk into a room, you want people to go, holy shit. Right. When you move, uh, when you watch a movie, holy shit, that's, it's called the holy shit factor. That's what I call it. So. Dolls um, of Horror would like to know. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure we got the yeah. comments there. I uh, would like to know what got you started in writing. What is, oh, yeah. Um, what got me started in writing? Well, I've done enough bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one thing. <laughs> the other thing, too, was kind of cool is that I did a movie called Space Marines. All right. Uh, this is like a 90s movie. I shot it in, actually in Dallas, Texas. Of space marines played a great character fun character but they, ne- they didn't kill me i'm like what well, this the john piper ferguson was the main bad guy and i played his right i always play the right hand man and so uh you know sometimes i got to play the main guy but a lot of times i did but i also this one i played the right hand man and i just got there you know really great character and uh so when i did that film they forgot to they forgot to kill me off and like and they're like holy crap what do we do and so I said, hey, let me write, let me write the right last part of it. So I wrote out this thing and we shot it. And so it was kind of cool. So I shot it and, and then they put it in the film. So I went to the producers after and I said, uh, see how I'm still alive. Let me write the sequel of this. And I'm going to name it Quest for Gold. And um, and it's a uh, and so he said, yeah, so I wrote this thing and then I liked it so much. I turned it into a screenplay called Dark Sun, so um, which is really cool. So it just kind of got me writing, and then I just went and I wrote another one called The Promise, about uh, two brothers who one escapes from prison, breaks his brother out of an institution, and they go across the country to find their mother, who made a promise to them, you know, twenty years or ten years before that they'd always be a family again. And that one. And then I wrote another one called My Good Boy, which is one just got. Um, just got uh, optioned and it's loosely based on a lot of things that happened in my life about a kid who grew up being picked on and beat up and uses sports to get advantage. But when that's all taken away through an energy injury, what happens to that person? You always hear the great sports stories about the guy who overcomes all his odds and either wins the Wimbledon or Super Bowl or whatever. Right. You ever hear, hear about the guy who's lost everything in an instant? What happens to that guy? And that's what happened to me. I went through about a year and a half of, depression uh been on trial more than times that i can want to tell you um and i've done things i'm not too proud about you know and that was through this time that i i had to battle a lot of different things and so you know there's other other screenplays i wrote one of them called el demonio um there's a, a, I a couple of them i got there's a couple more that i've got i've got one that's that's a it's the it's the i'll be creating a new horror franchise with it's kind of cool. So I just love stories. I love telling stories. I love, and it's funny when I'm really into writing a story, I'll walk around like still living that story. People will try to talk to me. I'm like, what? Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, so I'm still thinking about those characters and stories. So that's kind of how it all started. So, um, good question. Good question. So, uh, you're welcome, D- uh, Dolls of Horror. And uh, Hobbs Horror wants to know what was it like playing a dual role? One being in the opening love sequence of Elm Street Five, and then also being Super Freddy. Uh, did you have to prepare differently? And, <laughs> and also, great to have you here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, there was a there. I had a stunt. Uh, I had a stunt penis. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm, te- I'm teasing. Um, so yeah, so I'm. Listen, my first movie. I'm on the, I'll call it the sideline, <laughs> but I'm the set. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I love acting. This is so, I love movie making. Look at all, all these people, like 50 people, 100 people working together and then put the scene, you know, there's grips and there's lighting and there's this and there's that. And they're all working together and moving 90 miles an hour. And I was on the set every day. I never, you never found me. I'm To this day, you won't find me in my trailer, most likely. I'll always be on the set watching. I love watching movie. I love great acting. I love how people work. I steal shit. You know, I love stealing like bits and pieces from people, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's a great technique. I'm going to steal that or whatever. You want to use stuff, right? Because everybody's everybody's a, a conglomerate of what they their life experiences, right? What they uh, of what they've lived and learned and what they've been through. And so 
as an actor, it's the same way. And so I was sitting there on the set and I'm there, you know, I'm not got into in my makeup, makeup effects yet for Super Freddy. It was on one of my few, my, on my last day. And uh, they were, I saw the director and the casting director and they were talking, talking, talking. They look over at me, talking, talking, talking. I look over at me again. I'm like, holy crap, I'm either in trouble or I look like somebody or I got a booger or something like that. I don't know. So um, they, the director comes over and goes, hey, Michael. I go, hey, how you doing? Because uh, we're uh, thinking about uh, using you for a love scene. I'm like, uh, super funny. And, <laughs> and, and, and he went, no, no. So it was just called Dream Child. So Freddie comes back through the baby. Well, the girl needs to get pregnant. And so we need like body doubles for the girl and the guy. And we're thinking we need a muscular back, someone that's big. And and uh, we're thinking of you. I'm like, and you're going to pay me for this? And they go, yep. I go, sign me up. <laughs> so, so next thing you know, I'm um, in the uh, – um, after I finished Freddy Krueger or Super Freddy, I'm in bed with a skin colored uh, loincloth and this girl who's topless in her little, you know, loincloth bikini thing. And I'm in the top of her and I'm hearing grinding. We want to grind more and wanna <laughs> put your hand here. I'm like, we need us. We need to slow down. <laughs> You're not Super Freddy at the moment. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> definitely so um yeah so that was kind of cool i was a whole day of that and i'm like I, you gotta love hollywood so that was one of my few uh i think my only love scene uh there is a, a tv show called she spies it's kind of come around a little bit full circle so there's the i forgot the gal's name actress blonde beautiful super nice married she was married she was married to julian mcmahon oh. and of course i played belthazor and now she is part of the She Spies group, and I'm then the, and there's three girls, and she comes in. She's like this uh, rogue, uh, what else? CIA chick or whatever. I think it only lasted one season, didn't it? I don't know, but anyway, I ended up doing one, and so they they capture me, and I'm tied up in this chair, and in the and she comes in, and she's beat me with a phone book, and I won't talk, and I finally goes, I know how to make him talk, and she plants a freaking kiss on me. I'm like, I'm kissing uh, Julian McMahon's wife. This is freaking uh, awesome. Brooke Burns. Is that it? Brooke Burns? Yes, that's her. She, said, yeah, Brooke, yeah, said that. yeah. Yeah. she yeah. did her homework too. <laughs> yeah, so that so that's pretty uh pretty cool. Um how uh um um you know how that turned out. So uh that's about the only times I ever did a, a love scene with anybody. So it's uh um it was it was cool. But, uh, oh, and then, of course, you won't call this love scenes, but I, there's been many times that I've done, uh, which are always very difficult, very delicate, is, you know, when you're ever, I don't I hate to say the word, but, you know, when you're trying to rape or raping someone, you know, that whole thing. Like, Hills of Ice 2. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the actress that I did this with. Uh, Alex, I think Alexandra. I forgot. Yeah. Um, be wonderful, wonderful actress, super talented. Uh, and Hills of Eyes too uh, played Papa Hades, and I I threw her on the table, you know. And that's so there's all this goop hanging from my mouth. So that wasn't originally in the script. So I so at the beginning of the film, I'm think I went to Wes Craven, and I said, hey, um, you know these mutants have been breeding for a while, and not nothing going to be coming out perfect, right? They already look jacked up. Well, I, I'm figuring my lungs are going to be infected with whatever. So they added this snot and things in my mouth. So I threw on this table, the actress, and I'm, you know, I started going through the emotions of, of that and a big, and I, and I get on top of her and there's, I say, I go, you give me baby like that. And this big glob just comes out of my mouth and lands right in her mouth. <laughs> and she's like, let's just keep going. <laughs> So she was awesome. She was awesome. So it was good. It was good. But that, yeah. Then there was a couple of times, uh, best of the best three. Um, that was kind of, yeah, that was, there's times like that where um, you're doing stuff like that. It's, it's, uh, it's tough, man. That's hard. Yeah. I don't wish on anybody. It's crazy. Anyway, let's talk about some 
<laughs> um, you, you were saying how you would like steal techniques from people. Well, was there yeah. any, what would, um, who gave you the best advice um, acting wise, whether a director or a co-star that you can remember that helped you out? Oh, uh, James Gardner. You know what James Gardner is? Mm -hmm. Rockford Files. So, right. you know, then everything, Maverick. He, again, a legend actor I got to, that my mom and I used to watch, right? I got to do, do uh, uh, The Rockford Files. I did a movie of the week with him. Uh, I still have LA. And I'm still fairly new at this. I don't know about blocking somebody's light and uh, camera angles and trying to, and try to, when you're as an actor, you got to think it's sometimes from the camera's perspective, right? You're shooting from the camera and, and you want to make sure that you, you can feel the camera. There's, there's two things that, that people have told me. Um, and so I remember I was doing this scene where we go into this trailer, we grab, grab James Garner, uh, and we, we pull him out and, and, uh, he goes, excuse me, son, you're blocking my light like this. And he pushes me back. He goes, now remember, you have to think of this from the camera's perspective and wherever you end from the lighting perspective. So where, when you're, when you're, we're walking along and the light's not on me, what does that mean? I'm blocking you. Yes. <laughs> and I'm the star and we're not doing that. I said, got it. Got it, sir. <laughs> the other time too, is there was a stunt guy and I forgot the guy's name. Great guy, funny dude. I've worked with him about three or four times on films and he's always like, some guys when they get in fights and things like that, you, you, know, you pull your punches, they'll tap you, whatever like that. But sometimes they'll have a little fun, especially if you're physical like me, and they'll tag you a little bit more, right? Like in a gut or something around your, your face. Make it, make you feel it. And, uh, but he was coming up to me, he goes, you know, I'm still new. And I did a movie called West, uh, Whatever It Takes with, uh, everybody had three names. I had me, Michael Bailey Smith, Donna Dragon Wilson, Andrew Dice Clay, and Fred the Hammer Williamson. <laughs> There's four guys, four leads of this film. We're all had three names, all great guys. Uh, it was so fun to do. Uh, Don, the dragon Wilson is just an incredible, incredible human being, a great martial artist and good actor. And then all oh, Andrew Dice Clay, funnier than shit. Great guy. I saw him about a month or two after, after in, in, uh, in, Oh, I did a, I did a sitcom about a year later. He had yeah, a sitcom that he did. And I, I got, I guess starting that sitcom, I showed me, he goes, Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. But anyway, but the, the one stunt guy told me about finding the lens. So if there's two actors standing here like this and you're back here, right? And you're like, whatever, find the lens, meaning find a spot between both of them. Naturally find it like here. So you're always on camera. And it's funny because I watch him and he does that all the time. I'm like, it's a light. And then I, I watch whatever it takes when I, when I was talking about it. And I would find the lens. And every time I see that, I start laughing because I think of him. So there's like things like that, some some technical things that do. And then there's also crappy things that actors will do, especially people that have been in business a long time and maybe they're jaded, maybe whatever. What they'll do is sometimes they'll step on the end of your dialogue so the camera has to cut to them. They'll cut you off sometimes. They'll do a lot of stuff that's kind of shitty. So try try to put the camera more on them. I, I don't I don't like working with those types of people, so it's very collaborative and you know it's a wonderful creative experience and to have people like that who who are not in it for that there's in it for a paycheck um yeah you know that right. that's part of it is, is bad so anyway um i do recommend for the viewers uh there is the short film that you did uh miracle desert uh is yes. so um and I also saw something, what was it, like eight years in between because there wasn't enough yeah. funding to start it at first or something along yeah, those Yeah, yeah. So I, I read for this, uh, I read for this, uh, yeah, about eight years before that. Um, it came in. I love I loved those types of characters. A lot like Pluto from the Hills of Eyes is a lot like that. He's a lot like, uh, you know, um, like of Mice and Men, right, the Lenny character. It's kind of a lot like that, you know, uh, very childlike and innocent like Pluto in Hills of Eyes. If he was raised in a normal family, he might just been a big teddy bear, but he was raised in, you know, people that eat with a group of people that eat people. So that's what and, he does. He kills animals, yeah. yeah, that's what he does, right? So he didn't treat them as humans, he's an animal. So um, the same thing. Uh, yeah, so um, what was your question again? Um, I was just talking about, um, what was I gonna say? I just, just right, mentioned I was thinking about the Hills of Eyes. <laughs> 
Actually, there wasn't really much of a question. I was just um, talking about it um, to bring it up. Um, how did you get involved with that? Was that uh, did you know anyone with or was uh, with the Miracle Desert? Oh, again, sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I read for just read typical audition. Read for it. Mark uh, Hosack was the director writer. He's he's a good friend of mine now. Um, we still keep in contact, and uh, he's a writer. I've sent some of my scripts to him to read. And he's given me feedback and stuff. And a good dude. Great family guy. Um, yeah. And so, uh, and then, you know, uh, I was walking into a building, um, a couple of years ago and he calls me, he goes, Hey, Michael, how you doing? I said, Hey, Mark, what's going on? He goes, good. He goes, listen, uh, I want you to come out to the desert for me. I said, mm, for what? And he says, uh, yeah, you know, I got a little, I said, uh, remember that film? I said, yeah, I read for that, but I heard it went away. He goes, yeah. He goes, uh, we just ran out of money, but I got a little money. We're going to shoot, shoot the short and hopefully work to build, get money for the, the full feature. So um, that's what we did. Next thing you know, I'm out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, buried from the neck down. It was awesome. So we had a great, we had a great time. So very, yeah. very blessed. And, and I, I must commend you uh, as your character there because we don't really see what's off screen. We get a good description and uh, you definitely pulled that off. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was so. good. It was good. It, it, the, again, Mark, Mark uh, is a great director, great writer. Uh, just, a, um, you know, it takes, it's very collaborative. Yeah. The two actors can sit in the hole and be buried from the neck down and things like that, but it takes great writing and they'll do that. And working with J.R. Bourne, he's a tremendous actor. I, I was like, you know, sometimes you work with actors like, you know, again, the holy shit factor. He's he's the holy shit factor kind of actor. You know, you have to you have to come in with your chops, man. You don't want to look bad with that, right? So, uh, making sure you can hang with him. So, good stuff. Yeah, he plays uh, Arjun on Teen Wolf, so which is coming. Yeah, back. I can't wait. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty cool, dude. Funny guy. Yeah. I'm going to the Disney realm. The how did you how did a uh, pair of kings come about? Because you got to be in two episodes of that. Yeah, uh, a pair of kings, just typical audition, you know. Um, I, I played, uh, I forgot the character's name. Um, what was it Zad Zadok? Oh, Zadok. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was this great, great role. I played this uh, this evil emperor with evil powers, and I was frozen in time. And then the two guys, the great guys, they pushed me into the light. I'm always in the shadows. They pushed me into the light, and then I come alive. And this whole thing of, of just it's, it was great. I love that show. I did another. Uh, I did a. T I did a Disney. Well, not Disney movie, but I did a movie, Disney type. Uh, you know the the Air Bud movies. Mm -hmm. So I did another one called Spy Mate. So it's with a spy whose partner is a chimpanzee, and then Richard Kind was my boss, and I played the evil henchman who chases around uh, Emma Roberts. Remember Emma Roberts? So she was little at the time. She's a little girl. And so I chased her around the country. We went up to Canada, went to Jamaica, uh, San Diego. We filmed all over. So it was great. It was cool. Yeah. And you got to be in my uh, favorite Martian, too, the remake of that, yeah. which yeah. is great. I absolutely love that. <laughs> yes. I got eaten by uh, Daryl Hannah. I mean, you can't say, you know, how many people can say that on their resume? Eaten by right. Daryl Hannah. Yeah. So. And speaking of eating, you also get eaten in Men in Black. I do. I, I, but that's more off screen, though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's good enough. It's funny during that filming of Men in Black. So I normally don't, you know, do like dinky roles. You know, like the, um, you know, it's, not, it's never, it's never a small role. It's always small actors. But um, that's they always say. But you know, when you get to a certain level, you kind of want to have bigger roles. And so, but you know, Barry Sonnenfeld was like, "Hey, we we want Michael for this role." And so, you know, I I said, "Okay, yeah, it's Barry Sonnenfeld. I'll just freaking show up and say hi." And so. Um, we were there uh, and I got to work with Laura Flynn Boyle. And I remember, so that scene, you know, I grab her around the neck and go, hey, pretty lady, you taste good. And then I, I lick her on her face. And so we did a rehearsal and I'm like, and I only known her like for two minutes before we did this. Hi, I'm Michael. Hi, uh, you know, I'm with uh, <laughs> Laura. And that's no, I'm licking her face. So I'm like, and between takes, I'm like, you know, Laura, um, you know, I'm not too aggressive with women, but this is like really, this is trippy. And she goes, I don't even know you when I'm licking your face. She goes, <laughs> she goes, I kind of like that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, good. So anyway, that's yeah, pretty funny. So, 
And it's funny. Um, this is kind of a funny story. So I won't I'll tell it still too. I can't. Uh, guess no, it. you can't. Anything goes here if you want. It doesn't matter. No, it's just about. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't want to say too much. But, oh, okay, yeah. then that's okay. fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it. It's a pretty funny story. Uh, I'll, over beers, I can tell you. Uh, but it's <laughs> it was great. It was a great experience. I got I, Tim Tim Sitars, my son double. He played the guy going up in the ground, you know, upside down, because he had to hang there like for forty minutes, fifty minutes. So I'm like, yeah, we need to get Tim doing this. <laughs> So I got him on, you know, I try to get him employed all the time. So good. You know, he's got to pay the bills too. So um, now it's dark was saying that uh, your, his favorite role was Ben Grimm in the thing, or I mean, fantastic four. Yeah. It's clobber time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's funny if you watch that film. So of course I played Ben Grimm and then I played the voice for the thing. And so at the end of the film, when, uh, Reed Richards and uh, Susan Storm get married. We come out of the church. Yeah. And they then they and they tweaked my voice all for the thing stuff to make it more you know darker and whatever. Uh, but the they forgot to tweak that part. So it's my real voice. You can you can hear it goes hey guys, you know step aside you know whatever I forgot so yeah pretty cool. I, it's funny when you when you do something like that. It's like one of your first films. You wish you could do things over. You know, oh gosh, you know, the stuff you know now compared to back then, you know, it's, you always get better with experience, right? So at least you tried to. Yeah. Right. With oh, the, right. my uh, favorite. Julian, oh, and, uh, Julian McMahon played Dr. Doom in the Tim uh, yeah. story films. Yeah. Yeah, Tim story. yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, small world and uh, definitely small business for sure. That's why I understand some people that. You know, walk around with egos or piss people off or getting fights on set and things like that. And uh, don't you understand that it's a small world? You know, I understand you stick up for yourself on, on certain things, but don't be don't be an asshole. Yeah. You know, just don't do that because shit goes everywhere and always treat everybody at this at the same respect. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a set and I hate it as an actor when all the crew is in line to get craft services. And the actors are always supposed to go up front. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting in the back of the line with everybody else. Unless I have to get in prosthetics early, you know, what I'm doing or I have to do something. Then, yeah, then I'll eat way before anybody starts. You know, I'll do that. I But I hate that. And I've had, I went after people who treated like background actors and things like that. I'm saying, you know, saying, hey, that's unacceptable what you're doing. I don't, I don't like that either at all. And I'll see uh, when other actors have mistreated people. And, and, and I've had actors mistreat me. A couple times where I they were mistreating me, they were treating me like really like shitty, like bad. And I, I told the director, hey, can we like take like 10? And he knew what was going on. I'm not gonna tell you the two shows I was on that was just doing it. I said, Why well, don't you take 10? He goes, Yeah, go ahead, Michael. I went to the actor, I go, You and I are outside right now. All right, let's go. Went outside, and next thing you know, that that dude was pissing his pants. So, uh, yeah, I, I made sure that, that didn't happen again. So, or how someone treats somebody on the reverse side of that, on the reverse side of that, I did a movie. I, uh, I've done a lot of things that is not even on, um, IMDb. I did a one short called, uh, I didn't, but this one, I think it's, if it's on or not, it's called truth of truth about beef jerky. And I, and it's about this, the best taste in beef jerky in, in the country. Come to find out it's made from chopped up humans. So, and how do we get that? How do we get that uh, that wonderful taste? Is that I am the dime, the uh, grocery store clerk at a small, little you know dime store place on a corner in the woods, and I direct these people down. It's like Hills of Ice before I did it. So down the street, down this dark road, and they end up killing him and turning him into beef jerky. Well, we shot this in like Big Sur in northern part of California, and this is like hippie country. Like right? a lot of hippies are there. And no offense to any hippies here if they're listening. But uh, um, so they actually got background people, um, real, I mean, they were real life hippies. They had the hippie van. It looked like the Scooby Doo van you see on Scooby Doo, you know, the whole situation. And they had like piled with, with all these hippies, women and men. And <laughs> that seems really weird. And so they were in the background. They had one actor who was the actual, the main hippie guy. So we were doing this scene where I'm the, the clerk and the the, ex, the background people who were the real hippies, they're an actor. So they didn't, they couldn't, they weren't relating to the, to anything. And they weren't like being scared. They just stood there like zombies. 
And the director was like, I, I can't work with this. We need them to, to get, to be feared, you know, they need, we need them to be scared and whatever. Um, and so, cause they, they thought they knew this was just acting. So they weren't relating. So during um, a break for lunch, the director comes up to me and he goes, uh, Hey, Michael, I want to ask you, can I ask you a favor? And I go, what? He goes, what I'm getting, I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get out of the, these hippies, uh, out of the background people. I need you to go and scare them. <laughs> how, how do you want me to do that? I don't know. Figure something out. I'm like, okay. So he's hiding around the corner, peeking as I walk up to him. And literally, they're all sitting around in like in a half circle with one guy in the middle playing a guitar. This is like straight out of freaking airplane. You know, we're just playing the guitar, whatever. And I walk up to him to stand like this, going like this, looking at him. And all of a sudden, the guy with the guitar goes, hey, man, what's happening? How you doing? And I went, I went, damn, it fucking stinks around here. You guys take a bath? Oh, that's right. Hippies don't take a bath. <laughs> and I started going on about, and you, what do you do for a living? Oh, that's right. You live off the government. Oh, I'm here bust my ass, making a living. You're freaking living off the government. I bet you go home to your mom and say, hey, hey, mom, I'm the I'm the hippie. Yeah, you know, I live. I, I freaking went off this whole riff of just freaking screaming at him. Next thing you know, uh, they start crying. I felt so bad. And I walked around the corner and the director goes, that was freaking awesome. <laughs> I felt so bad. But we did the scene and the guys are like, they're just like freaking scared shitless. You know, they wanted to leave. The girls were crying and I felt so bad for them. This happened to me before too. So when I did, I did Hills of Eyes. So I did Hills of Eyes 2, right? Marianne, Magdalena, the, the producer, as I get in, we shot this in Morocco. So I get in this, right when I get in on the day, uh, I get there. I get there and she pulls me. She goes, Michael, listen, uh, we're not getting what we need out of the out of the actors that are playing the soldiers. I n you can't be nice to them. I, you're a super nice guy. I need you to be mean to them. I'm like, I'm then my character's mean. <laughs> and she goes, No, I mean mean to them all the time. Like, you don't talk to them. You're just mean to them. I'm like, but I just do it. I said, Okay. So I'm sitting in the I so I I, I get up in the morning, the next morning, I'm getting there and I'm sitting in the back of the the van, I'm sitting there like this, you know, like whatever, look at all hard. And all of a sudden the doctors, the ones that are playing the soldiers come in there. And then one of the girl goes, turns and goes, hi, how are you? I'm like, <laughs> she's like, okay. <laughs> I, just, I, just out of her. I felt so bad. So at the end, of course, I had to go, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm not like this. I'm a nice guy. Because I figured you were, you know, like that. So I've had to do that a few times. Did you get a chance to tell the hippies that you was just doing that too? Or? Uh, no, I didn't. No. So they, I think they took off after that scene. They're like, yeah. You know, so I felt so bad though. Yeah. I they probably think I'm the, they probably swear, he's the biggest asshole I ever met in my entire life. So. <laughs> uh, that's why Dalzapor was saying, good on you, scaring the shit out of people as always. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's true. I, I, I like, I, it's funny. I went to go see the Hills of Eyes in the theater uh the 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 scene in the trailer is pretty intense you know with killing the mom and you know the whole thing with the the, the daughter and me still and the baby and it's so funny i sat in the back and watching people get up and walk out i can't take this anymore i bet you know, whatever so it's pretty intense you know yeah. so crazy good stuff on the maybe eh, now i can't talk my favorite Martians, mm -hmm. um, you get to fight against like characters that are not actually there, like suit and like the giant monster thing. Yep. Did they have like a target thing for you to look at? Yeah, or it's like you a little, to imagine? It's like a little green ball they have you stare at. So like the part at the end where I'm like, I'm screaming and the big monster comes and eats me. That part, I screamed so hard. I almost passed out. I was holding on to the rail, like going <gasps> as hard as I can. And I literally, when I got done, I was like, um, I, I saw myself starting to go black. I screamed so hard. Yeah. So oh, wow. yeah, just, that's what you have to do sometimes, you know? Um, yeah. I haven't done like a lot of the films, like, you know, uh, Transformers or something like that, where you're staring at, you know, some ball flying around like that. Nah, not that but, yeah. yeah. We have some actors that have worked with nothing and some that work with targets to look at. So I was just kind yeah. of curious. Yeah. It's, a, it's mostly a target. Yeah. On um, you did uh, you played a coach in Malcolm in the Middle. So how was it like 
being in sports and then switching the roles around playing the coach. Yeah, that was a soccer coach, crazy soccer coach. Uh, and um, it was it was cool. Um, it's funny. Again, uh, you're sitting there screaming at little kids and like real moms and their kids are walking by. And they're going, that coach is an asshole. And then they have like, hey, don't be yell- don't be yelling at uh, those kids. I'm like, cut. Who's talking? And it's like some mom all pissed off. No, and they have to go explain her. No, we're we're filming here. It's just like all oh, you know. Thing. Was, they know it's pretend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so back on the back on uh, undisputed with being ranch Wally snipes. Here's a crazy story. So there's a part in the uh, we filmed this one part in High Desert Prison, and we went to this abandoned prison. If you take the 15, you go to Vegas on the 15, you know, and you go by that first town. I, I forgot the name of it. It's around the and it's around the uh, the border of. Vegas and I mean a lot of Nevada and California. You, you go to the Vegas on the 15. Um, right on the the right, up in the hills, is an abandoned prison. So we shot the uh, we shot the um, cafeteria scene there where I started a big fight for that. So the casting director, unbeknownst to us, uh, most people, I needed extras. So from what I understand, when I heard, she got like gang like real straight up hardcore gang gang members be the extras so what do you what do you think is going to happen me in a white beater shirt swastikas an ab all over me i get up start talking smack to being rames and there's an extra next to me going yo motherfucker i'm gonna kick your ass you ain't shit bitch and then and someone and then i'm like i'm trying to say my dialogue and i'm hearing this guy next to me talking smack to me like he's gonna kick my ass and they call cut and walter hill's going okay who's talking i'm like talking to this guy over here because it looks like something's going up. Come to find out the dude had a gun. Oh no. Had a gun. Yeah, it's crazy. So a lot of stuff happened. Yeah. That I have to tell you that working at working at a high um high security prison, there's a pucker factor of about a 50 or a hundred on that. You don't mess around with that shit. And there was like a couple guards walked up to me and they said, I'm gonna tell you something. There's about three dudes in there right now who look exactly like you. When I first saw you, I thought you escaped. Uh, we were coming out like, ah, no, I'm just a just an actor, you know, just doing my thing. So, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, you were also in an uh, episode of House, also another prison scene. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. There's a bit of a um, pattern here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, as I say, you know, people say, "Are you afraid of get getting typecast?" Nope. As long as the ke- checks don't bounce, I'm good. You know. <laughs> Uh, so you, I might not, might not consider me as a movie star, but I'm definitely a working actor, right? So I go from gig to gig, and I'm the kind of guy that, like just recently, uh, me and a good friend of mine, uh, we went to the movies uh, yesterday, and we were in, in the movies, and uh, we went to this one movie. It was great. It had, it had dinner and drinks. So it was a great, was a great, uh, great experience. The bartender goes, Belfazor. You're from, yeah, no, I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I was like, he was a big fan of Charmed. He knew me. I was like, first of all, how do you, I don't look like this, you know? He goes, no, but we know who you are. And so it was, it was pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. That's, that's all good stuff. <laughs> that's great, though. Um, I know you, uh, you said you would like to play a Bond villain, but is there any other type of role that you haven't got to do yet that you would like to? Um, I, I just love working. I really do. I, I love, uh, characters with lots of arc and, and different, you know, I'll play the, you know, I'll of course play bad guys and things like that. And, uh, I just, you know, as an actor, you always want to, you know, there's a, there's a few times in my career <clears throat> where I've played characters that were just fit like a glove, just fit. You're like, Oh my, I could do this character forever. Um, but like, you know, the, of course, James Bond are, are perfect. It was, I would love to play a James Bond villain of some sort. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, I don't know if there's any other types of characters I would like to do, but, uh, I've been pretty blessed with what I've played. I've come close to some other things too, which has been quite interesting, but, uh, um, and then, you know, made like every actor gets promised the world, right? Oh, you're great. I'm going to have you on my next film and you never get the call. You know, but I've had other times too where I read for a um, I read for a Burger King commercial like years ago. Didn't get it. I had to call back. The whole situation didn't get it. 
you know, typical, okay, fine. So then uh, this Amazon pilot came up and it was called Cocked. It was about two gun manufacturers. Um, it didn't, the pilot air, but it didn't get picked up. And, and uh, but it was two gun manufacturers. And uh, and so I went in and read for the pilot. It was a recurring character. I had to call back, another call back. And I'm getting it. First day in the set, I show up and the PA, one of the PAs comes with, hey, Michael, uh, the director wants to see you. I said, okay, cool. So um, we were shooting in downtown Los Angeles. She took me to the, we were in these big high rise buildings, went there and went up to like the 20th floor, 30th floor, whatever it was. Went up there and they're up there filming some stuff. And they get, took a break and the director comes over and goes, hey, uh, Michael, how are you doing? I said, good. Uh, thank you. And I said, hey, I'm blessed and thank you for having me. You know, thanks for, you know, hiring me. And he goes, he goes, do you know why you're here? And I said, well, I'm playing this role. He goes, but you know why I hired you? I said, well, hopefully you thought I was a good enough actor. He goes, well, no, you were, but understand something. About a couple of years ago, maybe not even that, you read for me for a Burger King commercial. Uh, I wanted to hire you, but the product people for Burger King didn't want you. They wanted somebody else. So, but I was going to remember you because I was going to use you for something else. And yeah, you still had to go through the gauntlet of auditioning, but you were my guy. I wanted to make sure you could handle it. So congrats. So right there, it just shows you, and this has happened to me a few times where I've, I've done good work. And next thing you know, someone's calling me and say, Hey, I want you for my next film, you know? And so but there's other times too, that I've done good work and people have taken my, like, uh, the Van Damme film or other ones, a uh, town and country uh, where the director, you know, the assistant walks up and goes, Hey, the director really enjoys your work. And you know, what's your contact information and your agent's number? Cause we're going to use you for, you know, next film coming up. I'm like, great. And I don't get a call, you know? So I just learned after a while, you know, until you're in front of the camera, don't, don't plan on anything. Right. And even after that, you know, I fortunately haven't been cut out of anything. I know a lot of people, actors have, but don't plan anything until you can actually see it on the screen. So. Yeah, yeah that is true. Yeah. So. And, um, uh, never mind. I thought went bye bye. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> Wait till I get it back. You, you thought went bye bye? Okay. Um, from any movie or TV show, um, have you taken home any props to collect? Any memorabilia? Uh, I have. I had the uh, Super Freddy uh, prosthetics I saved in the bag for many, many years. And then, uh, uh, then I had, then uh, something, I got lost it. So it's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, then um, I got the teeth from the, the Hills of Eyes. I got that. No one's else going to wear those. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I got the Charmed outfit. I got the suit, the Charmed. I have that, the black suit. Um, actually, because it's really hard to find a suit that fits me. A lot of the suits that I wear are from sets. <laughs> I, I, you know, I now can go get suits made for me, which is nice. But, you know, for a while there, I just wore stuff that I got from the set. So it was kind of cool, you know. Uh, yeah, that's that's better. And then I've gotten like memorabilia and things like that from different things, you know, swag and things like that. When something comes like Men in Black 2. So I did Men in Black 2 and I got a big like a case, a Men in Black case is kind of cool. and Different things. So, oh, and then uh, every so often I'll take like if my name's on the back of the director's chair. I'll take that. I have a couple of those, which is kind of cool. It says Michael Bailey Smith. So, yeah, good stuff. It's like, it's like, is your name on it? Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I remembered my thought now. <laughs> Who's talking about the inhale? Um, when you actually got to fight with uh, Jean Claude, what was it like to actually be fighting with somebody like him? Good. Um, he's, you know, you know, of course, you know his history and some of the difficulties, you know, and you hear rumors about different things. Uh, but from my perspective, uh, works very hard. Uh, good fighter. Very good fighter. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Um, he, I get kicked in the balls a couple times. He broke my nose. Um, but other than that, it was good. It's funny. There's a scene uh, in, in Hell where I go into this... Uh, I go into this uh, cell and I rape this kid. I'm trying to get Von Dom to fight. The warden's trying to get me to try to get me. Warden's trying to get Von Dom to fight me. He won't fight me. Uh, and so they send me in. They bring me in from a Russian prison, another Russian prison, 
to uh, fight him. And uh, but he has to fight me. And so to get him to fight me, he he puts me in the cell of his of his friend, this young guy. And I go in there and try to rape him. Right. So there's a big fight scene that starts. I end up killing him or whatever. Or no, I end up, I end up killing him. Yeah. I end up the crap out of him. I think I end up killing him. Uh, and but so in this fight scene, he's beating a living shit out of me. We're supposed to be this is all choreographed. He's kicking me in the balls. He's freaking crunching me in the face. I'm like, damn, you know. And the stunt coordinator David Leach is there, and I go, you know, and then, and then another guy. But the direct AD comes up to me and he goes, "Dude, what are you gonna do?" I said, "I go, I'm freaking getting this shit." He goes, "I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag him a little bit." So, so the, this prison cell had the, the bunk, and it was like on. The bunk was, uh, was, was a bunk beds, and they had angle iron, uh, and they just tack welded it right, make it, it springs, attack, put it up really quick. So I picked up the guy in the fight, and I slammed him on the the bed. It's all choreographed, and I'm like, I started dropping some shots on him, and there was blood everywhere. I'm like, holy shit, I I, I messed this dude up. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> I'm thinking, and there's blood everywhere. I come to find out it's my freaking blood. So when I crunched the guy in the, the bed, the, the the one of the bed posts come down and cracked me in the head. It split my head open. So there's blood everywhere. So I turn and I go, hey, I think someone's bleeding. One person passes out and you know, and there's blood down my face and everything like this. And so so they so they had to say, okay, we're gonna move to another set. Michael, you need to go to get your head fixed. And so I went to Bulgarian hospital. Now, remember this is ex-Soviet Union country, right? So um I went to this hospital and there's literally dead people on gurneys with sheets over the top of them as we're walking on the, the hallway to to the, the doctor's office. And I'm with uh, this gal named Stasi, who is this, I still remember her name. Uh, she spoke English and Bulgarian and uh, and she's uh, she's she's there. And and so we get to the we get to the the the, the, the doctor's office. And I'm sitting on this table that's literally a plywood with a sheet over it. I go, okay, that's good. And I look next to it. And there's like this tray, and there's a, like a one uh, medical, like a medical canister with a spigot on it. And there's a Sprite bottle next to it with more liquid with tape around the around the the spigot. I'm like, what the? What kind of hospital is this? And so and uh, so then uh, the nurse comes in smoking a cigarette. And she's like, uh, the doctor's not here. He's, uh, uh, he's having lunch. He'll be back in like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So we're waiting there, waiting there. Finally he comes in. He goes, he goes, uh, Michael, how are you? <laughs> Come on, I'm kicking your ass, huh? <laughs> and so, and he goes, let me see, let me see. So nothing on his hands and watch his hands, grabs my head, split. Well, it looks like you got the good one here. You know, and he, and he takes the freaking. He takes the Sprite bottle with the liquor spigot and pours it on my head. I'm like, man, I'm getting in trouble for this. Uh, my head's going to come off or something. And next thing you know, they, they glued my head shut and went back. And, uh, yeah, so I survived. That's quite interesting. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even know uh, John claude had, like, rumors or anything. I was meaning more of being, like, a huge action star, like, known for his fighting and stuff. Oh, but, yes, but there's also a lot of other stuff that's went Right, happened. yeah, I don't know <laughs> any of that stuff. Like, but. Steven Seagal, I think Steven Seagal's rumors are even worse. I can tell you some Yeah, stuff. I yeah. can imagine that. I've heard yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah. Him. yeah. Back in, you know, <laughs> the guys that, like, in the 90s and things like that, that were big action stars, you know, a lot of those guys had – you know, good, pretty good reputations one way, good or bad. You know, they had some reputations. So I used to have a huge crush on Steven Skull. <laughs> what? Steven Skull, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's funny. When I was doing uh, Hills of Eyes, I'm in a, I'm in a truck uh, with some Moroccan guy, and we're going to set, and I look in the glove box, it's, which is open. It's like no cover on it. And there is a Steven Skull can of deodorant with Steven Skull on the picture. I'm like, really? I he did deodorant. I didn't know that. I didn't either. But his, <laughs> his, you know, the the uh, uh, from Under Siege, Nico. He played Nico. It was called mm -hmm. Nico. Really? So yeah. Interesting. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. yeah. See, look at that. You learned some today. Right. So. Um, Hobbs wanted to know. Um, he wasn't aware that there were extended cuts of the Super Freddy scene. Uh, there was supposed to be more violent. Do you recall if they intended the Super Freddy to be more violent with more gore? 
No, it was pretty much. I think what we shot is what you saw. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I think what you, what you saw is what we shot. I didn't, I don't remember anything else beyond just that. So again, I pushed for a sex scene for super funny, but you know, with a super funny <laughs> penis, but that didn't help. So it didn't work. <laughs> it had like a monster penis maybe with yeah, like some claws yeah. coming out or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or just come up. <laughs> 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 a little mini Freddy. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Wait a minute. Don't uh, take an offense to mini Freddy. We've been talking about that. <laughs> A, a, a big, a big mini, a biggie, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's super, but not in all the places. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Sorry, my eye is bothering me. <laughs> yeah, my allergies were bothering me earlier today. <laughs> um, let's see if there was anything else in the chat. Um, is there any uh, interesting facts we might not know about you, whether hobbies or talent or just anything in general? Mm. Uh, I love cats. I have a cat named Dash. He goes from point A to point B very fast, so that's why I named him, we named him Cash. Uh, I just got divorced. That's another one, I guess. Uh, that's unfortunate, but it happens in life, and uh, so I'm officially single which is kind of interesting after 28 years i have two awesome sons that are playing college football which i'm very blessed um uh, and uh i'm not in jail so those are probably the, some of the good things you know there you go yeah. stop, stop playing this part you might end up in jail <laughs> yeah no, i know no it's all good no things things are good um and uh yeah i uh besides acting i work for a startup um i'm head of sales for this company um a high-tech company which i'm excited about i do that as well and uh yeah, i try to keep busy and uh all it's all about uh you know even though i'm an old dude i'm still going 90 miles an hour and uh i'm big on you know when i'm when i'm dead and i'm laying on that slab i want the, the mortician dude go do that dude that guy wore that body out and that's how i'll be both in my mind and my body i'm gonna work hard Till the end, uh, I have a lot more stuff to accomplish and to do. And my goal is to be, uh, in about four or five years, be living on the beach, drinking that one of those drinks with the flower with the umbrellas on top. That's what I want to do. There you go. Say, I wish I, I would have known you as you like cats. When my cat came to bother me earlier, I would have introduced you to him more, but he came over to harass me. So I had a holding for a little bit. Well, so you leave me alone. <laughs> my cats, I, I get on conference call with producers, things like that, or, uh, you know, business calls, or I've done uh, a, a few pod podcasts. My cat's pretty smart. He knows when I'm doing this thing here. Yeah. We're not walking across the screen, you know, we're not with the tail up in the air. So we're not doing that. Yeah, mine came over here and was rubbing all over me. And then he was like up on the chair. So I had to pick him up or he won't leave me alone. So I yeah. had to pick him up for a little bit. And then, but, <laughs> but I've had to mute a few times because my dog, she's barking, but yeah, <laughs> good. But, what else? Um, what else did you say? Oh, I've lost 50 pounds, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. So I, you know, there's not a lot of tall old dudes that are big that are walking around the planet. Most of them are dead. Right. So I'm like, huh. Why is that? Because they're freaking big and fat. And I don't want to be like that. I, I, I don't. So I lost, you know, and it's bad. It's hard in your heart. So I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. So I, I, and come January, I started dieting hard. I did nothing. I did intermittent fasting um, and did that and ate nothing but Kroger rotisserie chicken and rice or that and fruit or vegetables and was in the gym six days a week. And so, start dropping the weight. Now my abs are coming back and yeah, so I'm not doing too bad. So I feel nice. a lot better for sure. It's like we lose 50 pounds. You take that. It's like taking a plate from the gym, 50 pound plate and or bag of whatever oats or sand, 50 pounds. That's pretty heavy. Take, take that off your body. And your body feels a lot better. So it's been good. Yeah. Uh, so Kroger's, you must be like Midwest. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm in based in Dallas right now. So oh, gotcha. Uh, you guys are in Florida? No, I'm not. I'm in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where 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 in Wisconsin? It's uh the southern part. It's real close to the Illinois border. Um, yeah. Janesville. You probably never heard of it. So it's a small town. But so how did how did you two get together? 
YouTube, basically. Oh, well, yeah, basically YouTube, and then there's uh, some Facebook groups for other YouTubers, because we both have our own YouTube page, and we just post stuff in, like, groups and just kind of yeah. got talking that way. <laughs> the other thing that is, that's funny that I end up, tend up doing, uh, and I end up doing, is I end up... <laughs> Maybe I should keep my mouth shut half the time, but uh, I I hate to see people that um, that could do so much more with their life. You know, um, I'm just a goofy kid who was picked on and beat up, and you know, I I just I would never take no for an answer or anything. What what told me no? Oh, you can't you can't play football. You can't play Division One football. Oh, you can't play professional football. Oh, you can never be an actor. Oh, you can't be a paratrooper. You're too skinny. You'll never make it. You know, you're not good looking enough. You're not big enough. You're not a good actor. My, my first audition, one of my first auditions I had after I did Nightmare on Elm Street, I walked in for a commercial audition. And after I got done with the audition, the act, cast director asked me, she goes, uh, I have a question for you. Do you have a day job? And I went, oh, yeah. I said, I work for this test laboratory. I, I have a degree in computer science and put my, I write test code. She goes, probably keep that job. I'm like, what? Yeah, you should probably keep that job. I said, oh, okay. I walked out, naive, not thinking she was insulting me. I got in the hallway. I'm like, son of a bitch, she's freaking, I was pissed. I said, I'm going to freaking show her. And that's, that's what, I love when people tell me I can't do something. Or you're not good enough or whatever. Um, and so I get emotional when I talk about some of this. But I, I want people, there's, uh, so I read somewhere, uh, do you know where the cure for cancer is right now? Do you know where the, the probably the the formula for light speed or uh, space travel or teleporting is at right now, or all, all probably the greatest inventions in the world are at right now? Do you know where you know where that's at? Probably in the minds oh. of kids. <laughs> yeah. huh? So Ideas. probably in the minds of kids. <laughs> it's it's probably in the graveyard. There are people that live this life and do not push themselves. That are too afraid to step forward or say anything or do anything, and that's what happens. They end, they'll end up dying with these great ideas and inventions and stories and whatever. It's the greatest movie ever. They'll they'll forget those. They'll go to their grave with that. So don't do that. You have an idea you want. You have a passion for some freaking go for it. And that's what I'm doing. I do try to do this every day. Every day I do something looks big or small. doesn't matter towards my goals. So that's what I want to do. So I mean, that's, that's, what you, that's how I kind of live my life. I just say, excuse my language. I say, fuck it. I'm going to go for it. Someone has to make it. Why not me? You know? And if they say no, well, guess what? You know, in Silicon Valley, they have two words. They use words, you're either you're either successful or you're learning. There's failure is not that there's not that option. You're either gonna succeed or you're gonna learn. If you fail, you're you're gonna learn from that failure until you learn more and more until you start succeeding again. So failure is not in that, there's not in that at all. So that's, that's what I, I love those kind of little, little things that kind of help, you know, help me. I'm just like you, man. I, we all, I get up in the morning, I doubt myself, you know, I, I wonder what I'm going to, what my life's going to be like, especially now I've kind of started a new life, you know, I, you know, it's a bit scary and, and where am I going? What am I going to do? You know, and things like that. So, but you just got to put yourself out there and, that's that's what things that I, I was like i'll be in an uber i'm talking to the uber driver next thing you know he's texting me or emailing me or whatever and we're talking about how he can take the next step and whatever he wants to do and you know how i can help him so i like doing that so and i've had a few hiccups well i got some injuries where i can't work right now but i've been trying to like i didn't really know much about computers at all but my husband got me as um editing thing and taught me just a little bit and i was like so i've been teaching myself editing like i'll have like some videos where i just got a bunch of random stuff together just because i'm playing around seeing how to get it working and learning how to like i've been doing all the thumbnails and stuff i i didn't know how to do that like yeah. a year ago <laughs> it's like i didn't know how to cut pictures out and add them on there so i'm like teaching myself as i go which i'm pretty and now you're the thumbnail master so. right. well i wouldn't know about that but <laughs> 
But that's I didn't know that stuff like a year or so ago, but I've taught myself that. It's like every now and then I'll have a question I'll ask or whatever, but I try to figure it out myself. I try to I try to impart some of the things that I've learned along the way onto my two sons. I have one that's 24 who's a tight end at Central Michigan, another one who's a tight end in, in a junior college in California. And the the guy who uh, my older son who was a uh he joined the military after high school after he did a little bit of like me you know i floundered around a bit and so did he until he kind of figured his way and he became a special a special operations guy deployed you know did some pretty crazy stuff but i told him i said when you go in the military like i've been in the military that most people are going to go through life and in the military do do enough do enough just to get by i said you're so much cheating yourself don't don't do that. Do a little extra always. You got a chance to get a chance to step up and do something. Take the lead. Do it. Next thing you know, he grew, he uh, graduated top of his class in basic training and advanced training. He went to Ranger School and advanced Ranger School. Known as one of the best guys in his unit in the Seventy Fifth Ranger Regiment. Um, really special dude. And that's I and I taught to my younger son too. Um, and I think everybody should do that. Just do some a little bit extra. You know, don't don't settle. What you, for what you do don't settle because most, most people are going to settle and don't do that yeah. so you guys put on a great podcast asking some questions and i'm well, glad you came we appreciate you taking the time so. thank you sir yeah it's good stuff so, uh let me see so, i hope we see more where you have a little bit of a why we love your villains and monsters and everything but i want to see a little bit more of like your other character kind of slip up you know with a little bit of the singing and a master decides at the very end you had some dancing going on at um, the end i remember that yes yeah. <laughs> and then uh there was oh what was the other tv show i'm going blank uh desperate housewives even though you played a bad character you did that funny gasp thing when the other person yeah, revealed yeah, something yeah. so i was bring out a little bit more personality a little bit that's <laughs> why so i hope to yeah. see <laughs> i'm kind of a goofy dude i might not look goofy but i i love I, I don't i i just i want to enjoy life man i remember one time i was doing that master not i was doing spy me and i remember they taught me how to i mean i've ridden a snowmobile a little bit when i was a kid but i we had a part where we shot up in uh up in the mountains in uh by vancouver i rode a snowmobile on top of this one mountain i could almost see the curvature of the earth it was freaking awesome and I made a phone call to a few of my friends just on top of the mountain. It was freaking awesome. Just seeing things like that or going down to Jamaica and, and filming, working with a chimpanzee and and just doing crazy stuff going, you got to pinch yourself times. Like I remember I was doing, um, doing Nash bridges in San Francisco. And I remember they, I was on a motorcycle and they were pulling me on a trailer. And I remember between takes, I, I just got up and stood up on top of the, the motorcycle and go, and this is on uh, Treasure Island uh, by in San Francisco area. And uh, I got up and I go, yeah, I'm fucking Michael Bailey Smith and I'm getting paid for this shit and I fucking can't believe it. <laughs> and then by, it was early in the morning and my, just, and my voice just echoed and I just, sometimes you got to pinch yourself on some of this stuff. You know, again, I, this, 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 you know, like I said, I grew up with my mom watching these old movies and dreaming about, you know, Charlton Heston and Gregory Peck and all these, you know, incredible actors. And uh, next thing you know, I'm, of course, not at their level, but, you know, in the same business. And it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty remarkable. So, you know. I liked your vampire in Bloodshot, too. I caught that one. I accidentally watched the wrong, wrong Bloodshot first. I kept wondering why there was no vampires in that one. <laughs> 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 and then I realized my mistake and watched the correct one. <laughs> is, is there, is there, I tried to look for it today. I couldn't find it. I saw the trailer. I found it on Plex. The one you're in is on Plex. Okay. Yeah. It's so, like Tubi. It's free. Yeah. So that, um, that's kind of a, a sad story to a certain extent. So my good friend, uh, Dietrich Johnston, he wrote that, he wrote the, he wrote a short of that and I started. So Dietrich, went to film school and I did all of his student films. Great director, great, crazy mind, uh, brilliant mind. Um, and it's funny in film school, they said, all right, so for our senior films, 
There was going to be no violence, no guns, no uh, anything else. All right. What does he do? He does a short film, Bloodshot. Guns, violence, blood, everything, bad language, doesn't matter, doing all this stuff like that. Uh, they they refused to show it in the senior thesis, but they finally did. Got a freaking cheer, cheering ovation, standing ovation. Um, and uh, and so he we shopped it around, went to all these film festivals, it won a bunch of awards. I won like best actor and all those other things in it. Um, end up this one gentleman who's came from a family, I can mention who it is, came from a family of money. And uh, they gave us two million or three million to do it, uh, and uh, so we did the we did the full feature. We wrote the full feature, and we were shooting it and everything like this. And I think it was a mixture of a lot of different things that happened, but it didn't. It got behind in, in production. Um, I know that, and uh, things little some things got out of hand a little bit as towards crew and things like that. Uh, me and Brendan Brendan Elliott, who was the, the actor, the cop in this great actor um had you know had a lot of great great people in it and um but then uh he wanted to finish it and the 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 owner of the film got some other people involved and took it away from him and so the what you see is not hit really his vision all of it and so as towards editing process and it's a shame but it's not actually not too bad of a film i mean a lot of his stuff that he did really shines through and that character was written. That character was written for me. Um, it's a it's a Nosferatu meets a, you know Terminator, and that's a that's something that I can do definitely. <laughs> definitely in my wheelhouse with a little bit of comedy in there too, because I have that. And when I did uh, Master Disguise with Dana Carvey, we wanted to add a lot more a lot more comedy. I worked with a guy actor by the name of Vincent Riverside, a uh, great guy. He was my right hand man in in that, and we tried to add more comedy and. But we're we're we were pretty good at that, and and so with the uh, with Bloodshot, we did a lot of that as well. So um, it was good. I love that character. It was it was good. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it after I got the right one. <laughs> but I mean, my husband seemed to start laughing at me because I told him I was like, oh, "I gotta watch Bloodshot. We like that. It's got Vin Diesel." Because I didn't like really look. I just saw the name. I didn't like click yeah. and see everything in it. I didn't research as much as I normally do. I was well, like, "Oh, that's the one with Vin Diesel. He was in that." Yeah. Well, the thing is that this film is a is not politically correct. It's in yeah. your face. It's and we sh we showed it at a film festival once, and it got a cheering ova standing ovation. People, everybody loved it. It's about a vampire that kills terrorists. He works for the CIA. How freaking badass is that? What a yeah. great yeah, and great there's idea. so many great people in there too. A Brad yeah. daughter of. Um, Lance, I can never say yeah. his last name. Uh, 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 yeah, and Hendrix and um, who was the other dude? Um, the guy was in uh, Mortal Kombat yeah, and yeah, uh, Highlander. Yeah, um, the, the oh, Christopher Mace. Lambert. Yeah, Christopher thank Lambert. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. yeah it's definitely enjoyable. Once I got, I was so confused. I was like, yeah, I gotta watch the Vin Diesel fighting vampires and. Then I watched it. I was like, "Oh, there's no vampires in this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, "You thought those?" I was like, "I literally told you, Vin Diesel fighting vampires." <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I it was really good. But yeah, if you want to find it stream anywhere, I found it on Plex. Okay, cool, good. <laughs> I'll do that. I got the I have posters of it, and uh, yeah, some good stuff. Good. So um, I saw, I guess uh, you got some conventions coming up uh, that you want to mention. Yeah. So uh, I think it's in November, beginning of November, I'll be at Monster Mania uh, in Philadelphia. And uh, I will be there. Um, and uh, I will be uh, in uh, my Super Freddy. We have a bit of Super, Super Freddy outfit. I'm going to call it costume outfit there. And I think Robert England's going to be there too. So it'll be kind oh, of cool. nice. Yeah. They should do a double photo up. That'd be cool. Yeah, if he would be there too. But I don't think he's gonna. You know, it's Robert England. Come on, man. So, but <laughs> I'll do it. So, so. <laughs> well, I know it's uh, some prior cons. I don't know. I know they did. He has dressed up as Freddy at certain conventions. I don't know if it was Monster Mania or not. But yeah, my my uh, my uh, my two sons are playing college football, so my whole weekends are packed full of traveling to go watch them play football. So okay. that's what I'll be doing. 
but uh, I'm going to take uh, the weekend off and go do Monster Mania. So that'll be fun. I'm trying to remember. Um, they only did one or two shows before the company went out of business. Um, was it the FX show in Orlando you were at years back? And um, what's his name who played uh, Daryl and Charmed the Cop? He was also there. Were you at that same convention? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I did. I did Spooky one year um, a, a long years ago. I think it was Spooky. I, we did Spooky Empire with me and Holly Marie Combs. I think was there. Well, it wasn't that one because I didn't meet Holly yet. I'd like yeah. to. Yeah. So that. Yeah. I agree. But yeah, I, I remember I briefly met you. It was years ago. But I'm like, oh yeah, let's uh, try getting him. So good oh. seeing you again. <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah. Um. So since you mentioned Holly Marie Combs, uh, was there any uh, fun, interesting, uh, funny uh, outtakes on Charmed, or uh, outtakes? I don't know about that. There were or funny, anything that you remember that had to cut or not really. Um, I have a photo of Holly Marie Combs on one shoulder and in her stunt double on another shoulder. I'm holding them both like this. Uh, I have that photo of that Polaroid of that. They don't do Polaroids anymore, but that was that and. Then, Right. Uh, they were they were great ga gals. Always treated me very nice. Uh, um, yeah, it was it was, it was it was. I had a great experience. Again, very blessed. I started that episode that that whole series as a guest star playing Janor Grimlock on episode of All Hollowell's Eve, and then they liked what I did. Said, "Hey, we want you back to play Belthazor." So I ended up playing that and Shax, and then uh, the source. Source, yeah. So it was good. Yeah, it's again very blessed. You know, I'm not. Uh, I do not uh, <coughs> granted and nothing like that. So very blessed. Oh. Oh. She just me. I was gonna say if uh, I don't see any other questions, um, unless there's any other stories. I mean, I don't have any more questions right now. I, I personally enjoy your stories. You're like, uh, yeah, your stories are awesome. great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, it's been fun, and thanks for having me uh again i'm i'm uh honored and blessed that you would think this highly of me to have you on your show so i i appreciate that you know again i was just this freaking kind of a lost dude you know after the cowboys and ended up finding chasing some girl to california and san diego and went with a friend of mine to an audition and ended up getting it and then had this career you know and and uh still still at it and you know and it's all i'm kind of making that dream come true when i was a kid watching it with old movies with my mom you know and now it's like come full circle my mom still my mom still can't believe it my mom said i can't believe that this is what you do and i said yeah and i said it's kind of cool and she still watches old i saw her about a month ago or so went to my mom and dad's house there and live in south dakota uh in rapid city area so we were there and so they're watching old movies with her. Mm -hmm. so it was really cool. She goes, now you're doing what they did. I said, yeah, but, you know, I think Gregor Peck's a little bit further along than I am. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. So, so uh, he thinks a little bit more than I have. So they just call me the working actor. You know, uh, people recognize me. Hey, you look familiar. You know, I've met before. No, not really, but I've probably been in your living room. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything that's going to be coming soon that you're able to talk about or anything that you're working on that you don't have to give details on? Or Yeah, so just the, the screenplay. I have a screenplay called My Good Boy. It just got optioned, um, and so uh, we signed a paperwork for that, um, and that is going to be, I think, pretty cool a movie. It's going to go into production next year. Excited about that. I'm going to be a producer. I might play a small role in it, but it's something I didn't really write for me. Uh, someone much younger and much better looking than me, for sure. And hopefully a lot better actor than me. Uh, those are the things. But uh, other than that, is that I, I'm continuing to write. I, I really want to focus on my writing, which I love quite a bit. And uh, yeah, just, you know, I, I, yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, would you have any plans? I know you're doing screenplays, but any plans like maybe doing autobiography or memoirs or anything? No, I haven't. I have not. So, uh, uh I, I was reading just a couple of days ago, reading uh, one of my journals I had in the past. So I'm just a page from my journal, some of the things I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And I was I was reading some stories that I had written a long time ago. I'm like, holy crap, that's not too bad. I can't believe I put those words like that on that page. Yeah. That's pretty funny. I must have been crazy. 
<laughs> I, I love it though. We're all a little crazy. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you have to do sometimes. But I, I want to thank you, guys, thank you all for you know having me. I appreciate it. Again, thanks for reaching out to me. And you know, any when we back, I'm here for you, man. So let me know. Awesome. So, all right. Yep. You can always reach me. You can always uh, you know Facebook. I Facebook. I have to figure out a way because now I have five thousand people. I got to switch to. I think the public version of it or whatever it is, I have to do something like that. Mm -hmm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to build up the whole. Uh, I Instagram. think after so many, then it's just a follow after that or something. I yeah, I'll figure yeah. something out. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, but that and um, yeah, so all good stuff. Blessed and blessed for you guys to have me. Appreciate it. It's great having you. Yeah. So, yeah over two hours like i said it just goes on so fast no, I, haven't eat, I haven't eaten yet so my stomach yeah like, and my yeah, cat like, <laughs> and my cat's like going hello yeah. <laughs> meow yeah. Yeah. pay attention to me meow he's over there looking at me right now right he's on the floor going you done dude yeah. like come <laughs> on all right but yeah thanks again and it was a good time and uh thank you, you're thank always you. welcome back so thank you appreciate it thank you guys all right thank appreciate you. It. Bye. 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 Oh, oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, all right. Good times. Good times, as always. <laughs> it's great. He should, he should definitely like do an autobiography or a book on tape or tell his stories or something. Oh, <laughs> most definitely. He's got some amazing stories. <laughs> so. But yes, uh, so we'll be doing Wednesday. Uh, Lou Taylor will be coming on from. Evil Dead, of course. You're like, yes. <laughs> I know you got a lot about that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even started on him yet. So, because so Michael Bailey Smith had so much to, which I'm not complaining about. Oh, don't no, get me no, wrong no. on that. <laughs> but he had so much to watch that I've been solely focused on him. So I got to, like, he's had an uh, amazing career. career so. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, as the way I was wording, I was like, I, I better make sure that nobody thinks i'm complaining about it but yeah i i can't wait for lou taylor how do you say his last name i think it's pushy 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 pookie pookie where'd that come from <laughs> I think it's a little bit of pookie. all right who fails four here we go yes <laughs> that's what little pookie doing <laughs> uh, i don't know if i want to make one the way i'm calling an actor pookie but <laughs> Delete, delete. Okay, I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that one uh fails one where I thought you said skunk potatoes. It's got almost 600 views I, on TikTok. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it only has 14 on my channel. Let me check. I think it's 14. <laughs> But my channel's been nerfed, so I could see that. But we're working on changing that. Uh, yeah, 14 views. I just labeled it Boom Fails Part 3. Uh, it's like this is going to be a whole series. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we should have started it over a year ago. <laughs> I'm sure there's... Right? Yeah. Well, I was still kind of teaching myself editing, so I didn't really know how to do that. I'm sure there's clips of me saying something stupid somewhere, but I'm not going to go through every single you interview. You got to go back and watch every clip. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No, so I those know, are I lost know. in time. <laughs> it's, a, it's its own horror time capsule. Like right. <laughs> Usually after we do a show, I can remember about where it's at, where I could find it easier, especially right. like in a two-hour uh, two clip. I don't have to watch everything yeah i can no, I, 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 I wouldn't have you go back now but right yeah i'm not and yeah once i learned how to do that i was like yeah i'm not gonna go searching there's too many to go searching <laughs> more fails so the fails oh. series have started already <laughs> from here on out. <laughs> yeah from here on out there's three parts you can find them on my channel <laughs> or tick uh, TikTok has two of them, I think. I don't remember. There's at least one of them on TikTok. I don't remember if I put more than one on TikTok. I don't know. But all three are definitely on my channel. There's at least one on TikTok. I'm going to post something else on TikTok. I just haven't decided what yet. 
I might watch one episode of American Horror Story before I go to bed. <laughs> but yeah, I might <laughs> watch something while I eat, but I haven't decided what because Black Phone just got put on Peacock, and I haven't seen that yet. It's so good. I'm, either, I'm either gonna watch Black Phone or I'll watch something. Mr. Pookie did. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. He might end up watching and then feel offended. I shouldn't say that. No offense if you watch. <laughs> so, but yes. So uh, yeah, Wednesday, which is a special day for us since we don't usually do weekdays. But hey, if you're if like I always say, if they're available, sure, whatever you'd like. Thank you for coming. We appreciate right. it. So and, and I'm super behind on editing. So if anybody watches this on. Uh, I don't know if anybody in our chat does or not, but if anybody Spotify. watches us on Spotify or whatever, I'm super behind on editing because I've been so focused on preparing for things. <laughs> so hopefully after Wednesday, I could get caught up. Yeah. So I got our females one done, but I don't have Lola done. Now I'll have Michaels to do. So I'll probably wait till after I have Lou's and, and, and then I'll just get all three done and, It'll probably take me two or three days to get that done because it takes me a couple hours to do that. So, so I'll get it done. <laughs> That's like a plan. It depends if we're going to have a guest on that Saturday as well or if we're just going to talk about whatever. So I'll figure that out in the next yeah. couple of days, probably. So, so yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm super behind. So I'll get it done eventually when I have time. But I said each one takes me a couple hours to do. So I got to be able to have the time to sit and do it. Yeah, so hopefully tomorrow at work won't be as crazy at Walmart. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. I mean, all these bottles of wine shattered in the center of the aisles. He was just tearing stuff down. Like it was crazy. People were freaking. Out. Some people were filming it. Some people, like the mother and daughter, were standing in the back. Like, can we go out for like what's going on? Like, I mean, they were afraid to get near the guy. It's probably a uh, bath salts. Now I don't probably. know about them personally or anything but usually all the stories from florida involve that or that extreme involve it, like two or three times taser like first time to take him down he was still going i heard so. yeah when she said that i was like oh, i bet that's bath salts someone that turns people into like freaking zombies <laughs> yeah so, uh, <laughs> all right well go enjoy your dinner i'm gonna head out too and Watch one thing before I go to bed, <laughs> or two, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Getting a little so, burned on the pizza side. And, well, I still got a pizza, but I got chicken, bacon, ranch pizza. So. Mm, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So I got to pop that in the oven. Yeah, I had some broccoli and cheese noodles before I came on. That was my dinner. So. I haven't got to eat yet. I have ate all today because I put a grocery order in, so I wouldn't have to walk all over the store and be exhausted by the time... <laughs> We came on, so we had to go and pick that up, and I got a shower and do laundry and all that. I haven't had a chance to sit down and eat. <laughs> but, all right. Well, you enjoy, and everyone, thanks for watching. <coughs> and we'll be back Wednesday, so same time, just different days, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Lou Taylor. Couché. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>